Hi all, uh, like um, my name is uh, Ranjan and I have 10 plus year, year of experience in software development. Uh, today in this uh, session we are going to discuss on uh, Node.js and in Node.js we are going to discuss end to end of how the what is the use of Node.js and a lot of things we are going to discuss. Okay. And before going to that let me explain what is the class or how we are going to do the, all the classes like uh, every two hours like this class is Node.js workshop. And uh, in this class, we are going to run from morning uh, 9 o'clock to sorry, 9 a.m. to evening 6 p.m. Okay. Every two hour, we have a break and we'll go for one hour lunch break. This is our structure and we are going to cover Node.js end-to-end -end, like from starting how to install Node.js lot of things we are going to discuss in Node.js workshop. Before going into that to start the Node.js what are the things you have to know basic. The basic thing you have to know that HTML, CSS not CSS but for us HTML, CSS and JavaScript. If you don't know JavaScript don't worry like i am going to cover the javascript also here but not going to cover fully javascript if you want to watch our javascript session please go to our youtube channel i, I am also going to share that youtube channel uh, youtube link for our javascript session where you will learn about javascript and typescript out of thing but before starting this session you have to know that basic programming means you have to know the basic how the program is work a lot of thing you have to know uh, then you have to know this html css is optional Okay, it's up to you. If you do, know or don't know, it's not matter. But you have to know the JavaScript first. If you don't know JavaScript, I am not going to use uh, like not not going to use lot of feature of a JavaScript. But you have to know how to declare a variable, what is a function, lot of things. You have to basic things you have to know the, about the JavaScript. If you don't know, don't worry. I am going to start from JavaScript. Then we'll go for the uh, uh, Node.js. Okay. Now the now the, the Let's go and start with Node.js session. Before going to Node.js, I let you know why this Node.js is required. Okay. Before going to Node.js, you have to know that what is the use of JavaScript. Then we'll go for the Node.js, then we'll learn up a lot of things. As you know, like suppose now in the market, everything run the top of JavaScript. If you know JavaScript, let me start from JavaScript. JavaScript is a JavaScript is a programming language for web or browser. Means when you open any application in the browser, okay, suppose you're opening Facebook or you're opening Twitter, you're opening any application. If you want to run any kind of browser programming, then we require the JavaScript. Example, <coughs> suppose you want to do any kind of, uh, suppose you want to do any kind of programming in the server. Suppose you have to know PHP, you have to know, suppose um, uh, Java Spring Boot, or you have to know the .NET Core, lot of things available to the programming in the server side. Now, the same way, the application which is run on the browser, run on the browser means, I will show you one thing. Suppose, this is our Synotex site. In the Synotex site, in the right hand side, we have a contact, quick contact. If you open this quick contact and if I click on submit, you can see that I am showing that these are the required fields, right? This kind of programming, this kind of validation programming, if you want to do, you have to go the help of JavaScript. Means the overall idea of the, this program means JavaScript is going to run and execute in the client machine. Now you will ask the question, what is a client machine? Guys, we will go Node.js later because first you have to understand all this concept. If you know what is the use of JavaScript, what is client side, what is server side. Once you know the, all these things, then we will go to start the Node.js concept. Okay. As I told, 
Java script is a programming language for web or browser. This browser, this browser, what a browser means? It may be your Chrome, suppose your Edge or Firefox, whatever browser you are using, that browser is running where? It's running on your machine. On your machine means suppose you are opening this browser, suppose you are opening Facebook or you are opening Senutech, you are opening Twitter in your browser, mobile, in your browser. That browser is belongs to your machine. Your machine means your personal machine. Then if anything belongs to a user, if anything belongs to a person, that is called a client. Means browser is a client. <coughs> client means you are the people who are client. Then means the JavaScript programming is a client side programming. Means the JavaScript is going to run on your browser. Now the question, what is going to run means JavaScript is a client side programming. Understand what is kind of client side programming? Client side programming means your whatever programming you are going to write in the JavaScript that is going to execute and run on your browser. That is the basic start of a JavaScript. You have to understand if any JavaScript programming I am going to write in, uh, in I am going to write that application is going to run in my browser in my client machine. Okay, clear? What is the use of JavaScript? JavaScript is going to run on your client machine. Clear? Now the things, then, then what is, if, if the application running in a client machine, then how, what is the use of my, suppose um, uh, this Java Spring Boot or .NET Core or .NET MVC, PHP, that lot of programming, okay. What is the use of that programming language? As I told, browser know only three things. If you run, if you want to develop any application for a browser, browser means Chrome, uh, Edge, all lot of things. They only knows three things. What is they know? Only know HTML, CSS and JavaScript. If you want to develop any web application, web application means the application which is run on the top of a browser. If you want to develop any web application, that application only know HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now we have a question. What is the use of Java then? What is the use of dot, dot .NET? What is the use of PHP? What is the use of different different language like um, Ruby on Rails? There are a lot of language, right? What is the use of that language? The answer is that language we call as server side programming. Now you have two things here. One is client side programming. One is server side programming. Now we have a question. What is a client? What is a server? Let's go and discuss first this client and server. If you know this client and server, then you will understand the importance of Node.js. Otherwise, you don't know what is the use of Node.js. Got it? First, you have to understand the programming language which is run and execute inside a client machine, the top of a browser we call as a client side programming. That's the reason JavaScript is the client side programming language means that language is going to run in top of a browser clear the same way if any programming language run the top of a server run on on top of a server then we call it as a server side programming now what happening here let me draw something for better understand suppose as i told we have a client side programming Example client side programming means suppose this is your client side, suppose this is your browser. This is your browser, this is your Chrome browser. Okay. This is your Chrome browser. Okay. This in Chrome browser, only browser know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Only know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Browser, if you, dev, if you develop any application, browser only knows three things. Now we have a question. What is the use of other programming language? Then that we call as a server side language, server side programming. Then we will understand what is a client side, what is a server side. This is a server side. Server side, this thing you can write in multiple languages. Suppose Java, you can use the C sharp. Then you can use the PHP, you can use the Ruby, 
you can use the lot of programming on your program it's up to you how you are going to write lot of thing okay now this is the this this application run on your machine on your machine means on your application that's the application we call as ui ui means user interface because why user interface calling because your application run on the browser this is the interface where you are going to actually interact where the user going to actually interact because i have developed this interface in this interface actually i am the person who is going to interact that's the reason this browser we call as a ui guys you have to first understand the basic concept of ui then server then database then we'll go for the lot of things because as i told this chrome is a ui layer what is ui layer means actually you are the people like suppose you can see this paint is a ui why ui because here actually we are going to work here actually we are going to execute our code you are going to actually interact with a lot of element that is the reason is the this layer is the ui layer what is ui layer the ui layer means where the user will interact interact the application means first you have to understand the ui concept first this is the ui this is the ui you, you can open any application if you open facebook twitter anything whatever screens you are displaying in your browser or whatever screen you are displaying in a mobile screen that is called the ui ui means where the user going to interact that ui one of the ui is web ui one of the ui is web ui means which ui run the top of a top of a browser then what browser know browser knows only html css and javascript clear means if you want to develop any web ui then you have to know html css and javascript this thing we are not going to focus today because this is totally separate one you have to learn angular you have to learn react you have to learn lot of programming ui side programming where you want to go and design and develop the the web like our website like web ui we are not going to focus this ui today what is your focus today our focus is today is server side programming but always remember there is no use of server side programming if there is no ui okay suppose you want to develop one application and that application don't have a ui just imagine you want to develop facebook and there is no ui who are going to use the question is who are going to use that's the reason if you want to develop any application that application must have a ui that ui part we are not going to focus today but to develop that ui you have to use either angular or you have to use the react or you can use n number of different different programming languages for ui you want to you going to use but to in our today's session we are going to discuss about server side programming what is server side programming the programming which is run and execute on side a server okay now let's go to the server side programming we will discuss about what is a server what is a programming what is the use of node.js in top of in the help of a server side programming clear now you know that the first part is your programming is ui where actually the user going to be interact then then there is a server side programming now we have a question why this server side programming why this server side programming is required my question is my answer is suppose suppose this is our site and this is a quick contact thing now when someone going to fill this data when someone going to fill this data and click on the submit now as a developer as a person you want to whatever information a user going to enter in the screen once you click on submit you have to store this information right you have to store this information either you want to send the mail you want to store this information you want to do lot of thing right now this thing ui you can only design but once you click on submit how we can get this data now after this getting the data how can you store the data in our database okay now the question is there is another layer which is called database now you will ask what is the use of database a database means where actually you are going to store the data okay actually we are going to store the data means 
UI is the layer where you are going to interact the data. API is the layer, the server side is the layer where you are going to receive the data from UI and database is the layer where you are going to store the data. Basic concept. The first one is you have to send the data from UI to server. Then server is going to process the data, send to the database. Once this, this kind of things, this kind of things is a process means fast process is Fast process is you have to send data from UI to server. Then second one, server to database. This is the process. Clear? If you want to develop any kind of application, then you have to follow these three basic steps. Means there is n number of layer will be there, but a basic web application, you have these three things. One is your UI layer. Another is your server side layer. Another one is your database layer. The database you can develop using multiple language. If you are from a computer science background, you know that there are two types of database. One is SQL, another one is NoSQL. Okay, in SQL, we are going to develop, so in SQL, suppose, example of SQL, suppose Oracle, MS SQL, Microsoft SQL, then Postgres, then suppose, then MySQL, there are n number of databases available for the SQL server. SQL means it's a relational database system, it's called as RDMS, right? RDBMS, Relational Database Management System. Then NoSQL means it says there is no RDM, there is no relation. The example is MongoDB. Then suppose Cosmos DB. This n number of different different database is available in the market. But in a today's session, we are going to focus on MongoDB. Means we are going to use MongoDB as our backend database to develop the application. Okay. Now. As I told, the first layer is UI, second layer is server, third layer is database. Database, we are going to use the NoSQL MongoDB for our today's session. Now, if you want to develop any application, your application architecture must be contain these three things. Sorry, these three things. One is UI, one is server, software programming, another one is database. Then, the use of the use of the UI is where user are going to interact. Use of server means where actually your code going to execute, means your logic going to execute. Then third database means where you are going to store the data. These are the basic principle of a application. Means if you develop any type of web application, so web application, then this is your flow. One is UI, one is your server side, then your server, your second, your server then your database now you will ask me a question why i require the server layer because i can directly interact i can directly interact from this i can directly interact from this ui to database right i can directly interact this ui to database then a second i can directly interact from this ui to database then why i use this api layer now the question Database you cannot access direct from the UI. Why direct or not direct from the UI? Because earlier I told database the browser only knows HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay. What is the use of HTML? HTML is used to design the site. What is the use of CSS? CSS is used to styling the site. The JavaScript is the using the execute the programming. That is the use of your HTML, CSS, JavaScript. But JavaScript, there is no option to connect the external database. Means, suppose you want to connect from UI to MongoDB, you cannot direct connect from UI to database because there is no such driver is available, there is no medium is available where you can direct interact from UI to MongoDB, UI to SQL, UI to Postgres, you cannot direct interact. For that reason, we need a different layer. We need a layer where actually is going to talk between UI2 and database. That layer we call as a server side programming language. Means whatever request, whatever data you want to send from a UI2 database, suppose you want to store the data, example this screen, okay, you want to submit, you want to store database. This type of things, what will happen? First you will send from data from UI2 server, then server to database. This is the problem process means whatever you will send from ui to server 
that we call as a request okay you are requesting something means you are sending some data when you send some data from ui to server that we call as a request you have to remember this thing the request when i when i, when I use in the future in this session the term like request you have to understand that i am saying i am sending something request means you are sending something that is called a request the same way if you are receiving some data if you are receiving some data from server to ui server to ui then we call as it's a response i understand this basic question if you don't know understand request and response then you are not going to understand the node.js for that reason i am saying if you are sending some data okay sending some data if you sending some data from ui to server means your browser to server this is called the request if you are receiving some data from server to your ui this is called the response means receiving this is the response means whatever you will send it's called the request whatever you will receive that is called the response let me write it down in server side programming basic content two things what is content two things one is request another one is response if you use any application if you develop any app if, if you are going to use java spring boot or your dotnet core php any application you are using it's up to you if every programming which is run in a server side that content two basic stuff one is request another is response request means sending the data response means receiving the data receiving the data means whatever you will send it's called as a request whatever you will receive that is called response okay you just remember this request and response in in future future says like in future time you are going to use all this request response because request and response is the basic fundamentals of a server side programming okay why this request and response is required let me explain as i told ui work is only display the data and send the data receive the data there is no mechanism to store the data i mean okay there is a mechanism to store the data but the things will be you are not going to like uh, execute the complex business application basic client side application whatever you want to do you can do in, in the case of javascript but suppose you want to implement n number of response n number of logic like suppose you want to do authentication authorization multi multiple service call lot of things are going to discuss later but if you want to do all this kind of stuff you are not going to do inside the browser in not even going to do inside the client side because client side has its own limitation due to that we have to do complex project complex logic you have to do lot of business logic in our application in the server side programming because server side programming is more stronger than our client side programming okay now if you are going to request if you have two things in the server side programming one is request another one is response got it let's go first now whatever you are sending it's a request whatever you are sending is a response now you will know that server is a layer server is a medium where we are going to receive the data and sending the data that's the reason server is the combination of request and response to develop this server side application to develop this this kind of application server side application we require several programming as i explained the programming is java java c sharp php ruby on rails you can use anything the same way we have we are going to use the another programming that is called node js okay. node js means it's a node javascript but you will ask me question initial time as i told javascript is a client side programming language now initial time i told javascript client side programming means javascript will only run top of your browser now how a client side programming is going to run inside a server that is a question right initially i told javascript is only uh, javascript is the only program language for the web web means browser if you want to run execute anything you want to do then you have to then you have to do inside the browser only now i am telling we are going to use 
Java Node.js means Java script inside the server side. That is now happening because if you know the JavaScript nowadays, JavaScript used in all the places, not only the UI side. JavaScript is now using in the UI side, in the server side, in database side also, in the suppose machine learning also, like uh, embedded system also. JavaScript use all the places. If you know Raspberry Pi and suppose you want to write any kind of embedded system programming or any kind of programming, all the programming nowadays using the JavaScript. That's the reason. Initial days, there is no use of JavaScript inside the server side programming. But now, the help of Node, the help of Node, we are going to execute and run JavaScript inside the server. Now, the question is here, how, why I require Node.js? Because in, in previously, I have Java, I have Java means like Java, uh, Spring Boot, I have .NET, I have C Sharp, PHP, Ruby, there a lot of programming is there. Then why this Node.js is required? And now why all the companies are focusing on Node.js only? Uh, means other people are doing, but the things will be a lot of programming they are using the Node.js. Why they are using Node.js? We'll go to discuss all a lot of things on Node.js, but before going into that, let's we'll go and start with the JavaScript first. Why I'm going to JavaScript? Because Node will learn. But before that, you have learned the JavaScript. Because if you don't know JavaScript, then we are not we are, we are not going to execute the Node.js programming. I am not going to focus fully on JavaScript. I'll I'll simply tell you how to declare a variable, how to declare a function. This this is too easy enough for today's session. If you want to learn advanced JavaScript, lot of things, I am going to share the YouTube link for that. Okay. First, you have to learn the JavaScript. Okay, guys. Why Node.js is required? I, I did not explain, but the things will be Node.js is one of the server side programming where we are going to interact from UI to database and we have to execute our complex logic. Before that, let's go and start with JavaScript. Okay. To declare a variable, because you have to know variable, variable means the, where you want to store the value, right? To declare a variable, we are using var. Var is the keyword we are going to use the variable. Var suppose name equal to suppose um, Node.js means here var is a keyword which is used to declare a variable. Name is the variable name. Node.js is the variable value. Okay, I think you people all know that. But before starting to the our application, our Node.js application, we have to learn the basic concept. Then this is the declaration of declare of variable. You have to know the variable concept. Then to declare a function, to declare a function, to declare a function, we are going to use the function keyword, so function and function name. Function name is suppose add. Okay, add is the function name. Call it back at start, call it back at end. Suppose whatever code you are going to write, you are going to write code here. Then call a function. To so call a function, then you have to simple call add. Okay, why I'm saying I'm not focusing on the JavaScript because it will take much more time. I'm expecting people are know the JavaScript in basic JavaScript, but later we are going to do the Node.js programming. That time we will not know how to do a lot of things. Okay. Now this is the basic JavaScript you have to know to start the JavaScript to start the Node.js because we are not going to use a much more complex thing in our uh, Node.js, but for preliminary start for a beginner, you have to know the basic JavaScript, how to declare a variable how to declare a function. Okay, these are the thing, this is a normal function. There is another function called lambda function. Without declaring the function keyword, you can use the this kind of function. This, this function called the lambda function. There is a two way you can de declare a function. One is you can use the function keyword. Another one is without using the function keyword, suppose you want to declare this kind of function. Okay, this is called the Function, lambda function. We are going to discuss these things later, but just know that there is a two way we can declare a function. Okay, clear. Now we have to know basic of JavaScript. Let's go and start with actual Node.js. Okay, we'll go to start with the Node.js. First, we have to know what is Node.js. As I told, Node.js is server side programming where we can execute it's a server side programming as of now it is server side programming first one number is 
Node.js is a server-side programming. Okay, where we are going to run and execute the program inside the server. Then, what is the other things is providing uh, Node.js? Node.js is asynchronous in nature. Okay, I'll discuss what is asynchronous. Third things will be Node.js is event driven. Fourth one is Node.js is non blocking. Fifth one is Node.js Node.js is built top of V8 engine. I will explain each and everything. Okay. Let's go and discuss what is a Node.js. Node.js is a, what is asynchronous programming. What is a synchronous programming. Then discuss what is event driven. Anniversary driven. What is non-blocking. And what is the use of a V8 engine? Okay. Let's go and start with this no point number one. But before that, before that, let's go and run one project. We have to create one project. We have to install the Node.js first. Then we'll learn about the one and one with an example. Once we we'll learn ab about all the example, then we'll go to start the actual Node.js programming. Okay. Before that, to inst before to execute the Node.js programming in your system, first you have to install the Node.js in your machine. Okay, because if you want to execute the Node.js programming in your machine, then you have to first install the Node.js. Then, then what will do? Then we will go and execute the Node.js programming. Okay, to install the Node.js, first go to Node.js.org. First go to Node.js.org. Then you can see that you have two options here. One is recommended for most user. Another one is latest feature. What is recommended for most user means these are the stable release. Means these are the already, it's a older version where most of people are using. But the 17.9.0 is the current version means this is in actively development. It has a lot more features as compared to the old one. But always remember, in Node.js always going to use this version recommended for most users because this is this one, the stable one. Okay. How are you going to do that? Just click, simple click on this, this one. Once you click, you are able to download. If people can do the same thing in your machine, if you are, if you are in front of a machine, please click open the Node.js.org. I am going to send this link in the chat. Please do with me also. Okay. I have sent this link. You can open this one and after the click click on download you can able to download this exe once you download click click the exe just click it there and you can able to go for basic installation and what happening i already installed this uh, node.js in my already in my machine already i installed this node.js but for you if you don't install please go and process the next 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 process okay then what will happen once end of my this node setup you are also going to be know what is how the node.js work okay after you install, after you install the Node.js, first you have to verify that the Node.js is actually installed or not. Means you have to first verify Node.js is installed or not. Then open any of the, open your command prompt. Okay, open your command prompt. You can open your command prompt. Then command prompt just write node hyphen v. Node hyphen v. Then you have to understand. You have to see that there is a version is showing version 16.14.0. If you don't see this one, then you have to know that it's not installed in your system. Okay, then just after installation, just open node hyphen v, node space hyphen v, then you can see that what is the node version is installed in your machine. Clear? This, this that's the way you can check that your um, no what is the current node version is your install because I have some. It will be to one because its current one is 14.2. I have only 14.0. There is no issue. You can install that whatever version you have. But just imagine you have a 16 point version in your machine. Clear. Now you have to know this is the Node.js version is installed in your machine. Now what we told like first we have to go for the list. We will start start the start Node.js. 
first part will be the installation first will do the installation installation completed then set up the code editor set up the code editor what is the code editor is where we are going to execute and run our application okay to set up the code editor for node.js we, we are going to use the vs code we are going to use the vs code if no one install the vs code i am sending this link in the chat box please open this one in the chat box you can see that once you click on this download you want to open this link you have a code editing refined this is the url where this is the screen where you go and download your um, this download the visual um, studio code here the n number of different different version is available for different different platform if you are using suppose apart from windows if you are using mac or any other things you can download otherwise you can just click on download okay the installation process is the basic same next 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 you have to follow okay next 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 you have to do then you have to follow the installation process now what we did first we have installed the installation of node.js we have installed the node.js then we have installed the uh, editor then we have to set up the editor what is set up the editor then we will go and create one application and that application will go and run the node.js application but before that we have to first cover all these things okay okay meanwhile please set up all these things let me start with this node.js features why node.js is required for the for the server side programming as i told the first part the first part is node.js is the is the server side programming means node.js is going to run in top of a server means everything is going to run on the server machine it's not your machine suppose you have server means don't think you know your your machine is a server machine where actual code is going to execute where the all the logic is going to present that is a server side as i explained inside this uh, in this image okay this is the server side programming then node.js is asynchronous in nature let's go start with this thing from start what is asynchronous what is synchronous okay if you understand this asynchronous synchronous then you'll understand about the non blocking io and what is event driven lot of things you have to understand what is asynchronous what is synchronous i know many of people will know all these things about synchronous asynchronous but for your understanding i let you repeat it again what is a asynchronous okay just example before going to asynchronous, you have to understand the concept called synchronous. Synchronous or how do you want synchronous? Let me draw one paint. Uh, you have to understand first this one, then we'll go for the actual programming. Suppose, as you know, compiler. Compiler means the compiler who is going to execute and uh, execute the JavaScript programming. When you write a program, that program is going to be executed, right? For that, we get a compiler. That is called a compiler. The same way, Suppose you want to, if you want to develop one JavaScript app, suppose this is a JavaScript application, okay? I don't know about whatever you, you have written any code inside that. That code, whatever you have written, that code, suppose you have written one function, then you have written some, you have de declared an another things, then you have another things, but just you have a number of things this way. Just imagine these are the different, different kind of code. Okay, this black lines is the code. And this one is your container, container means this is a browser where actually your, your application is going to be executed. Now, when your application is going to compile, first you understand the compile model. While going to compile, the compile always happen from top to bottom. Means your compilation always going to happen from top to bottom. Means when you when your application is going to execute, that execution is going to happen from top to bottom. I mean, first this code is going to execute, this, this code, this code, this code, this code is going to execute such a way. Okay. But now we have a initial stage. What is the asynchronous, right? What is the synchronous? What is the asynchronous? Now you have to understand the synchronous programming. Synchronous programming means what? Guys, please understand this concept synchronous. When you type synchronous means if, just imagine, suppose this is this one is the line number one this is the line number two this is the line number three and this is the line number four just example okay as of now four lines 
Synchronous means until and unless the line number one is not executed, then line number two is not going to be start. Okay, means first suppose just example in your classroom in your school days, your roll number start from one to up to how many strength in your class, right? Then your teacher will going to ask one, two, three, four, five, six, like, like that way, right? They are not going to ask one, then five, then ten. They are not going to ask, right? Then they are going for a sequence manner. If your programming is going to run in sequence manner, then we call it as a synchronous programming. Okay, try to understand. Synchronous programming means your application is going to execute and run one after another like your roll number whatever your, your teacher asks in your class like right? one roll number one two three four so on just imagine these all are the different different roll number this is your class suppose this is your class the red 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 one in your class and this one two three four is your roll number then your teacher is going to ask only one then two then three then four teacher never going to ask one suppose then ten right teacher is not going to ask if the same pattern if you are going to following in the programming the same way if your application is your code is going to run one after another then we call as a synchronous programming synchronous programming means what what is synchronous programming means code will execute one after another okay one after another by default by default all the programming synchronous in nature is a default one means one it's going to be one uh, code is going to execute then next code is going to execute next code is going to execute next code is going to execute then just imagine another scenario just uh, imagine another scenario your teacher in a classroom just i'm giving classroom example you can able to understand all these things just red color as i told red color is your class the classroom suppose you are in 10th class or you your first class then then it is red one the red uh, this uh, this is the red one in classroom the black one is your roll number now synchronous you got it means your teacher is going to ask one after another one after another is synchronous then what is asynchronous what is asynchronous i I'll let you explain the same example what is asynchronous? Let it, let it down. Asynchronous means, first imagine, five, nine, nine uh, so teacher, uh, teacher told one, two, three, roll number four, then they ask roll number five. Okay. Now what happened? Suppose roll number five is not yet at the room. So in your classroom, roll number five is not is there. But what happening? User, user will wait for some time. Okay. He may be going to ask two times then they will jump to the roll number six but what happened when teacher is going to ask the roll number seven and eight what happening that time suppose this roll number five come to your class just imagine after this six and seven what happening the suppose fifth that time is absent okay fifth that time was absent now what happening when roll number seven is there that time only roll number five is there the roll number five is comes to our class so roll number five okay now what happened this time what happened this time this time your teacher will look okay roll number five is come then they are going back from seven to here the five then they will mark as okay this this student is available student is there that is called the asynchronous asynchronous means it is not going to wait for the entire application to execute suppose one two three five is not there okay let it be there they're going for another things when the five roll number people like student is available that time only this five is going to be called that is called asynchronous in you have to understand difference between synchronous and asynchronous in case of synchronous everything going to be executed one after another but in case of asynchronous it is going to execute but if something is not exist if something is not exist and taking more time to come suppose uh, student number five is coming to class some due to some problem it, like he or she is going to come class late but teacher is not going to wait up to class, roll number five will come to the class he, he or she is going to attend for the next uh, roll number 
that is called the asynchronous but synchronous case what will happen until and unless class number roll number 5 is not in a class teacher will going to wait until they are going to come that is called the synchronous but which is a basic example but understand in the term of programming when your programming going to be execute that time in case of a synchronous what happening it is going to execute one after another suppose line number three line number three programming takes about 10 seconds until and unless line number three is not completed line number four is not going to execute but whereas if you go for asynchronous programming suppose your line number five is taking more time then what happening it is going it, it will execute later and program is going to execute same way but line number five will call when the line number five is successfully executed means in asynchronous programming your program is not going to block your entire application it's going to be executed one by one if anything taking more time that will go for a separate uh, separate way and once that part is completed then that will going to be display the data that kind of application is called asynchronous don't worry i'm going to show the example but as as for your understanding synchronous means one after another asynchronous means it's going to be run when it's needed means if anything taking much more time that will going to be executed separately when that is available that is going to be displayed in your data now let's go and discuss okay yeah someone asked me javascript is a preliminary considered to be single threaded then why is no node considered the asynchronous okay i i will go for the single threaded because i didn't start at the single threaded that are going to cover in this uh, event driven non-blocking io okay first we have to understand the asynchronous synchronous then we'll go for the others other stuff okay now as you know the asynchronous means there is no sequentially call of the function sequential function call of the code when that is available that time only we are going to call that specific uh, specific block now let's go and display the same kind of programming I will go to create one ASIC synchronous and asynchronous programming for a demonstration. Then you know that what is the use of the synchronous and asynchronous. Okay. Let's go first. First, we have to cover this part, the asynchronous in nature. Okay. What is asynchronous in nature? Then we'll discuss the what is the use of event driven and non-blocking, their non-blocking IO, and what is the VS state engine, all these things we're going to discuss. Okay. Let's first start the node.js. After you install the node.js let's open this this one this is a node this um, uh, folder we are going to execute our code suppose let me create one folder called code okay let me create one folder called code and open this one command prompt and i have to open this one in code after install the code go to the directory just type code dot space now what happened your code is going to open inside the code editor Okay, this is our code editor. Now, this is our folder. We are going to execute the code. Just click it here, plus symbol, then write it here. Suppose um, I have created one file called async.js. Okay, this is a JavaScript extension in JavaScript.js. Okay, async JavaScript. Let me first do the asynchronous programming. First, we'll do the synchronous programming. Okay. First, we'll do the synchronous, then we'll go for the asynchronous. The synchronous. Suppose you have to declare two function, function, function one, then function, function two. Okay, there are two function. Let me inside the function. Let me console dot dot console dot log. If you don't know console dot log, console dot log is used to console something from your command prompt. Suppose function one. In same way, you have to go call console dot log two okay you have two function one is function one another one is function two suppose you want to call these two function then i have to call function one then i have to call the function two okay let me run this one if you run this one you have to go to terminal and new terminal otherwise the short command is control escape you have to click it there control tilt symbol just a second okay now here 
to run this application you have to simply write node node is the no, after install the node is available in the command prompt node then async dot js and async just as the file name of the node js okay this is a node js command to run a javascript program then you click on there you can see that displaying function one function two sorry function one function two means you can see that i have two function function one and function sorry function one function two it's executing one after another means after one function one is got executed then function two is going to execute this type of programming called synchronous and this is the default nature once after another is going to be called but if you go for asynchronous programming i will show you asynchronous programming what is the asynchronous programming okay. the asynchronous programming same way let's go for a let's go for so okay let me create another file called second okay let me do it here only let me create another function suppose function 3 function 3 and function 4 okay function 3 and function 4 you have to understand these two functions we have two functions the same way let me write the function function 3 i have to write console dot log function 3 and let me do console dot log function 4 okay now what happening to call the function let me call function 3 function 3 and then we'll call function 4 okay if you if you're going to execute then you're going to execute one by one then what i'll do in function 4 let me do under set timeout. Okay, I will explain what is same timeout. Same timeout inside the same timeout. I am going to call this function three, and that wait time will be suppose three seconds. Okay, what is same set timeout? For your understanding, if you don't know, set timeout is a function. Okay, set timeout is a timer. Is a timer where the functions where the function will execute after the given time means just set time and function inside that first one is the callback function means after this 300 3000 means it's a millisecond after this 3000 millisecond this function is going to be called means function will going to wait for three seconds after that this is going to be called okay let me do one execute this one then we don't i'll explain all these things if you click on asynchronous you can see that function 4 go, got called after some time function 3 getting called this is called a asynchronous in nature means it's not waiting it's not waiting for the function 3 to complete it's go to function 3 and it's check this is the one of the asynchronous it's go and out then what happening then it go to the function 4 then function 4 is going to execute you can see that first we have going to call the function 4 whereas function 4 is called after the function 3 but function 3 is going to be display first after some time we will display the function 3 that's the reason we have this is called the asynchronous in asynchronous means until it's not going to wait the first function going to execute one is not going to execute it's not going to wait the function 3 entire execution process is going to pass go to function 3 okay is take the way this is going to be called later it's not wait up to three seconds what it does it will go to execute the next point next line of code next function then what happens this function going to call when this one going to be available that time is going to be called that is called the non that is called asynchronous programming but the question is here you know what is the benefit of asynchronous programming there is a question what is the benefit of asynchronous programming okay then once you know the asynchronous programming then we'll go for the other part the first one will be the 
in the function 3 in the function 3 it's happening suppose this is your long running task suppose this is your long running task in long running task what will happen suppose this will take much more time then your application suppose you are going for synchronous programming your entire application going to be stuck because until and unless this is not going to be happen the next code is not going to be execute in same way what happening in large learning task if you want to do the synchronous programming that is the problem because your entire application is going to be stuck in that case if you go for a synchronous program asynchronous programming so asynchronous programming what will happen your application is not going to be wait for the for the further execution it will go and execute if taking time it will go to the next step to call in that case what will happen your application is not going to be lack okay when it's going to be available that time only that going to be work that is the use of the asynchronous programming as i explain in the as i explain here as i explain here if something is taking more time it's going to be called later is not going to be block the entire application that is the use of a asynchronous programming got it the programming of synchronous asynchronous synchronous is going to execute one after another asynchronous means it's going to be execute everything one after another it's if anything one is taking time then it's not going to block here it's going to be execute the next code that's the reason we have learned about here the non-blocking okay now someone is the non-blocking but non-blocking means before non-blocking i have a different event driven what is event driven i i have given best example for that first example in this code guys you have to understand this question because this is the basic question if you go anywhere in the node just interview they are going to ask the basic question what is asynchronous what is event driven what is the non-blocking non-blocking then you have to first understand this concept if you don't know this concept then you are not going to write the node just programming node just programming is build the top of this four concept asynchronous event driven and non-blocking these are the basic three concepts you have to first understand then you go for node just programming then you will think okay uh, why i am not going to start the programming first because you have to understand this this thing first then you will go for the other things okay then the question you will ask me why the then uh, my programming is going to execute one after another right but the things will be how this function three know that this work is completed this work is completed how they know that that is the use of event driven just a second someone asked me a question so what if the function for depend on the function 3 then we cannot use the asynchronous right okay i am going to execute i am going to explain all these things okay just wait because i am going to there only okay now the question is when you are going to execute the function 3 and function 4 then you tell that function 3 is taking time due to that function 4 got executed and function 3 after 3 seconds time is going to be called now you will ask me how the function how the compiler knows how the compiler knows that okay this function is ready this function is ready going to be called then we require the concept called event driven what is event driven let me draw something they will understand the concept of asynchronous event driven and non-blocking now what happened you have to first understand the app how the javascript application called means how the application execute okay in last example i have explained about in the last example i have explained about the the calling of application one by one only call but this is just a just a pictorial view let we'll discuss how the application going to be actual work when when you run any javascript application means suppose your javascript application you have function one and you have function two and suppose you have function three you have three function okay you have three function now what will happen when you execute this function one function two function three what actually happening to the javascript first of all understand the core concept then go to the programming then what happening there is a concept called call stack i'll explain what is call stack then we'll be able to understand first we'll understand the call stack okay what happening when you when you call a function when you call a function inside the things what happened this is the example of call stack everything is going to execute inside the call stack first 
when you call a function then what happening this function is going to going from here to here first you're going to is going to call the inside this call stack just example means when you call a function that time what will happen this will go into the first call stack is going to execute once this function is got executed what will happen what will happen then this is going out of the scope just a second guys just a second i'll give you another color combination then you will understand guys will make a patience because this is the basic things you have to understand first when you call a function javascript is going to create a call stack i am going to that way what is single thread or all this thing i am going to call a call stack it's a call stack then this function going to call inside this call stack okay this is the call stack the function one got it called first now after the function one executed after the function one got got a call stack is going to execute once it got executed work is completed then is going out of this call stack is going out of this call stack just a second it's going out of this call stack it is going out of this call stack just a second okay once you're going to call first going to execute then once execute after execution completed is going outside the call stack the same way the function two will going to call from the here to here going to call from here to here then once it's going to execute okay once you're going to execute after the function two got called after the function this is a function one suppose this is a function this is a function one function one got executed then it's going to the function two it's got executed then it's it, it completed the task is completed then instead of that it's going to call the function two it's going to call the function two the same way when you're going to call one function another function what happening it's going to be create it's going to be create one stack it's going to call one stack comes to call stack then one call stack is going to complete it's going to out of the call stack the second one going to call is going to be here then this, that is going to complete it's going to out of that function three going to call going to the call stack is out of the call stack means once going to execute is go, it's coming to the um, call stack then call stack is going to execute then going out outside the call stack you can see that here you will ask me question okay if function one taking time, why I am not going to create another call stack? The question is, if function one going to be execute taking more time, I can create another call stack, right? I either either create another call stack. Inside this call stack, I will call the function two. Same way, if the function some function two taking more time, then I will go and create another call stack. I, I can go and create another call stack. That call stack going to create that call stack going to be execute the function three. Right, you can ask the same question, right? Because I have three functions. Suppose one function is taking more time, then instead of doing that, why I go and create a another? I, I can why I going to use for this call stack one? I I can create another call stack. I either can another call stack. That thing I can do, but there is a dis, there is a problem on this because JavaScript is run in a single thread. Now you will ask me a question: What is this thread I am talking? when you give when you execute the program i'm giving guys these are the basic core concept you have to understand when you are executing a program when you execute a program compiler doing something right compiler doing going to execute all these things right that are the things actually happening in the case of call stack call stack you can call as a thread thread means when you are sending in when you are executing any code when you are executing any app to code what happening is not going to create multiple thread it's going to create a single container thread it's always going to a single container container thread called as a call stack means due to what happening one this code is going to here this code is going to here this code is, this all are the one thread application means in single thread you are going to call the multiple programming that's the reason what happening we are going to only for a one call stack for the reason we are not going to focus on the multiple we are not going to focus the multiple call stack because by default javascript is a single threaded application single thread application means your entire code is going to run in a single thread 
whereas if you go to a multi thread application means same time there is a multiple thread going to be start like suppose you are if you know java if you know dot net there you can create a multi thread application but in case of javascript in case of node.js or java you cannot create a multi thread application here or everything going to execute a one thread now we'll ask a question then then it, it should be slow right if my application contain only one thread and it's going to execute n number of coding then why then why it's going to be then why it's going to be uh, uh, faster as compared to other programming languages that is a concept called event loop okay you have to understand the concept of event loop then someone asked me a question what if the javascript is a single thread application how it's a faster and how it's asynchronous let to tell another concept called event loop okay, what is event loop first understand if you go to any programming any interview they are going to ask the first question what is the event loop first understand the concept of event loop okay now what happening suppose function one function one going to be called stack then after execution going to outside the call stack function two function the says such is going to call now what happening suppose function one going to call inside the function two function one calling inside the function two and function two going to calling the function three inside the function two the, the sequence will be the how the sequence will let me explain event loop what happening suppose you have function one this function one going to call the function two, then the function two going to call the function three. This is a basic concept. Now just wait. Function two going to be called first, then it will going to wait for function three. Then that time will function the function two, then function three. Now the problem is suppose just imagine there is another independent function called function four. Until and unless these three are not going to be called, this function for not going to be called. Suppose we are going for synchronous programming, synchronous programming. Until and unless this three is not going to call, function for not going to execute because everything is going to be one after one after another. Then now there is a question called the concept of event loop. What is the event loop? First we have to understand. Let's. I am giving one example. Example of what? A restaurant. Okay. Then we will go for all these things. So you are going to a restaurant and in that restaurant what happened what well, you have a restaurant this is your restaurant okay what happened in a restaurant there is a only one waiter is available is one person who is going to attend the all the tables okay just example you have a multiple tables suppose you have table number one and you have table number two I have to understand the event loop concept then we'll discuss all these things then suppose this is your table one and this is your table two okay. and as I told you have only one waiter or one attendant is there who is going to attend all the tables okay going to attend the all the tables Okay. Now, what happening? Suppose this this one table number one ask for one is going to ask call the this waiter. This waiter is going to call for table number one. First example. So understand all these things first. This one going to going to call. It will go to here. Now, while taking the order from the table one, the same time table 2 is going table 2 person going to call the same waiter now what will happen he will he will not going to go from here to here like okay you, you are ordering two or three item same time someone going to call the waiter is not going to stop from there only right he not that is on for table 2 he will first serve the table 1 he will get the order then he will go into for the table 2 after the table table 1 is completed now it will go into the table 2 this type of programming is called as synchronous means it will first give the it will first go into table one so just example table one is the function function one the first call the function one then it will go to the table three table two it's synchronous the same way 
what happening there is another table guys also there another table suppose this is a table now what happening table one order is table one given the okay i want this this order then what happen this person will go to a safe it will go to safe counter right it will go to a safe counter in the safe counter what will happen he or she will going to say that okay this is the order for the table one are you saying that this waiter is going to wait until and unless this safe is going to complete the order no right means suppose table one given the list of order then this waiter is going to the safe counter see the safe safe counter then it will going to send the request okay this is the request from table one please complete this uh, uh, order then you are saying that this waiter is going to wait until and unless the safe is going to complete no right what will happen he just delivered the order from table one to save save counter they will go attend the other counter right o other table uh, when this safe is going to complete the order then he will come back to here and take the order delivered to the table the process is i, I let me explain the process you have to understand this concept first then table one table one give the order to this one then this person give the order to this one okay give the order to this one simple one then what happen until and unless this safe is processing the um, preparing the food this one going attending the other order going to attending the table number three order when this one means when the safe is say okay my work is completed then this person will come to here and deliver this order to from this order to from safe to table one if you understand this process this process called as event loop event loop means first the, the first one is the is going to take the suppose take the order from table one table one then give the order to give the give the order to safe okay until the safe is preparing the food preparing the food then take the order from order from table two this is table one give the order order of order of table one to safe okay then again they will take the order from take the order from table three same way they're going to execute just imagine instead of order one the table one just imagine this is the function one okay now instead of table two suppose here function three sub function two then it's a function three i know that will take much more, more theoretical but you have to first understand the concept of this event loop if you don't know about event loop then there is a problem you cannot understand the the basic principle of a node.js just imagine while taking the order three from the table number three that time they are saying that okay my your food is prepared your food is ready for the table one this is called the event driven event driven means when you are taking the order from this table three that time this safe will say hi this order is ready if this type of calling we call as a event driven means your once this is ready they are not going to wait until and unless this prepare this food is going to prepare he is going to do their own task when this is going to complete this is going to call you that time only you're going to deliver product to the function one that is the use of event driven what is event driven as i told earlier when you create a node.js application everything is going to call a single thread single thread means only one call stack going to be called when any function going to call another function or any function taking time that time this is going go what will happen this will wait and this is going to be called the event loop is going to be wait for some time that time only other function going to be execute okay and what happen this function one suppose your function occurring function to function three this is going for a event loop structure event loop structure means this function there is a this function suppose function one then function two then function three 
is called a function. When this is going to complete, again we're going to call back to the real call stack. That is the use of event driven programming. Means by default asynchronous nature means because you are running the single threaded to making a asynchronous, we are going for a event driven programming. The same example I have given as a uh, like restaurant and safe. One safe is going to give attention to other different different tables. But in same cases, what happening? We are going to we are not going to wait until only the safe is going to prepare the data, uh, prepare the food. Then you're going to solve the other tables when this is ready and going from here to here. This is the one kind of basic example of event driven analysis thing. What is non-blocking IO? Non-blocking means it's not going to block the entire process means when it's going to execute the program that time if it's going taking the file line number five will take the time that time is not going to wait it's not going to wait until the five five line number five is going to uh, complete the task is going to execute the rest of the task that is called the non-blocking things these three are the basic stuff for the node.js let's go and discuss about the node.js build up top of v8 engine what is V8 engine? If you see the Chrome, Chrome browser, the Chrome browser, the backend model for Chrome browser V8. Means Chrome is built top of the V8 engine. V8 engine is a JavaScript runtime engine which is actually used to build the Chrome. Now the same engine is used to develop the Node.js application. Means Node.js application is run top of the V8 engine. Node.js is used to develop the, I mean Node.js is run top of the V8 engine. Means all the code is written V8 engine. Then what you learn? You have learned like what is a Node.js, what is asynchronous programming, what is event driven, what is non-blocking, Node.js is a V8 engine and event loop. Let's go because these all are the theories. I think I have spent much more time understanding all these things. Let's go and start our actual programming for this Node.js, okay? But before going into programming, you have to understand the question of what you can develop using Node.js, okay? Means use of Node.js. The Node.js, actually the use of Node.js is means what you can develop using the Node.js. First, you have to develop the web API. Okay, web API means I'll, I'll going to discuss on these things what is the web API a lot of things we're going to discuss but understand we have to develop the web API using the node.js the second one is non-blocking application okay, non-blocking means client and server application client and server application We can develop a lot of things, but just as a for example, the basic thing we can develop your web API. Another one is called the client and server application. Suppose you want to develop one chart application. Suppose like um, you are using some chart, right? That type of application you want to develop, you can develop using the Node.js. And suppose you want to develop any web API, then you have to develop. You can develop the using the Node.js. Let's go and start first the web API. Then we'll discuss about the client and side application. Before that, let me tell you what we are going to develop. Okay, what we are going to develop? Initial screen, initial screen I have explained about the three things. One is UI, one is I have developed about the UI, this is the UI, this is the UI, another one is your server, UI, another one is your server, this server we call as a API. I'll explain what is API or you can call as a server. The last one is your database. Right? These are the basic three things we have to go into focus today's today's session database. Okay. We are not going to focus the UI because UI total different part that is a different uh, classes for that we have to focus on the UI and uh, the, in this our class we are going to focus on the api and database database not fully but we are going to integrate between the api to database and consume that api <clears throat> then what is required for that let me uh, we have to start one project first then project we have to understand a lot of things okay then node project 
what we're going to cover first first we are going to use the ui second one is the api third one is the database there are three things we are going, going to cover the api we are going to use node.js for database we are going to use the mongodb for the ui somewhere we are going to use the html and somewhere we are going to use the postman the postman i'm going to explain later but just imagine for ui we are going to use the html and postman for before going to develop the api first we have to what is the use of node.js as i told the use of node.js where we can going to create the web api we are going to create the client server application but before can the web api means we have to first create a server if you don't create a server then how know that server means when as i told initial initial diagram node.js is a server side programming means this application is going to run on the server for server we have to first run create a server once you create a server then you will go and execute the node.js application then let's go and start with our real application on node.js first of to create a server because once you create a server then you will give a server server so you are going to uh, like you have to receive the data and send the data right first of to create the server go to your code and click it here right server dot js you can give any name but as a uh, demonstration i am giving server dot js okay let's go and start how to create a server to create a server i have to use http required now we have to understand this syntax first what is var is used to are used to declare a variable earlier i told var is the you are used to http is the variable is the variable what is required required is the required is the predefined function predefined function which is which is used to all the third party all the third party library so, okay i'll explain required don't worry application and this required http is the library from node which is used to create the server <coughs> let me explain one by one then you have to know that var http i have created a variable the name http the required means actually required uses file is common js like common js module it is convert the ess to module okay forward about that required js means suppose if you want to use any third party library in your application then you have to use the required required function required function is a is a standard function from the actually node node is giving the required function using the required you can import any third party library in your application here to create a server in the application to create a server you have to use a required required then you have to give the library name this http is a predefined library given by the given by the node.js which is used to uh, create a http means i have i have first imported the http library then what i going to do i am to create a server first then get a server to create a server what i'll do i'll do it, right create create http create http mean this http then create server <coughs> create server what happening in create server it's taking two things what you're doing is taking request and taking response 
will try to request and response or oh, don't forget about that I will explain everything then listen explain everything don't worry about that thing as will create a server then we'll go for the programming so run a node this application you have to write node okay then space the file name the file name is server dot js okay. it will go and open the browser and type localhost 300 you can see that Sorry, let me write it down 300. Sorry. You can see hello node, it's coming. Now I'll ask, I'm going to explain each and everything, but just a second. What happening? I have created instance of HTTP module. Then to create a server, we have to use HTTP. Then HTTP dot create server. Create server means it's a function is given by the HTTP module where if you are going to create a server, then you have to use create server. Okay, then create server. Then in create server, there is a function. This is a function. The function is function is request and response. If you understand our initial time, I explain a server is a combination of request and response. Means this server is going to receive the request and send the response for that reason we have written here request and response these are two parameter you can give an, you can give any name but as of now i am giving here request and response as a two parameter this is a lambda function what is lambda function because here i did not declare the function keyword this is a lambda function so one type of new design function okay require response then followed about this Lastly, I have written listen, listen 300 means I am saying I want to create a server and that server is going to run the port number 3000. Due to that, once you write it down, if you open the localhost 3000, then it's, it's going to run my application in localhost 3000. Clear? Then it's going to, it's going to run, first this is our basic, basic block to write the server then what happening to write something right means response what is response response means whatever you're going to send to the client initially initially you explain when you send something from the server to client then we call as a response the same way suppose you write something right means you have to display something then you write response dot write then response right means you are writing something to the to the response then I have end the response. Means I write something, then I have end something. And due to that, if I run this one, you can see that it's happening hello node. Okay. If I write anything, we hello node. Welcome back. What will do? You have to save it, then go to your terminal, stop it, you can run it and start. Refresh, you can see that you can able to see the data. This is the way you have to fast basic you have to create a server. Okay. But if you go for a server, you have to understand what a server contains. As I told earlier time, a server means a server means is a combination of request and response. Combination of request and response. Let's go and discuss the anatomy of a request and a response how the request looks like how a response looks like okay okay suppose as an example suppose if i write something here it displaying the data whatever writing here displaying the data in the browser 
instead of that suppose i want to create one html file just to create a html file suppose called index.html first example i'll create a file index.html in the html file i will create a simple call suppose um, welcome to let me add an h1 tag welcome to node.js okay. now i want to display this file this index.html file in the browser and display this index.html file in the browser how we are going to display this index.html file in the browser okay now you can see that this is a file as i told this is a file okay this file i want to display inside the browser for that what i will do instead of writing this one i have to first read this file i have to first read this file after reading this file whatever content will comes to that come from this file i want to send that data to our server for that to read a file or create a file there is a predefined library called file okay for that you have to use required file fs if you want to work any file stream or file you have to use the required fs fs means for file stream okay if you want to do or fs means for file operation so you want to create a file you want to read a file you want to delete a file you have to do a lot of things then you have to use the concept called the file fs but before going you can see that as i told earlier the java the node js is non asynchronous in nature asynchronous means you can see that okay if i go here right console dot log hello okay if i go on console log hello and what will happen if i stop it and run immediately it is displaying the hello right immediately displaying hello means what happening in asynchronous means it will go and execute this function right create a function function going to call but it's not waiting for this entire section until and unless this is going to be called it's not going to block what happening when you call this one this is going to be call but after that it's not waiting it's next move to the this line of code that's the reason our node just asynchronous in nature because this create server will take time to create a server but meanwhile it's not going to block the entire code from here it died jump to this code due to that you can see that if they stop it and run it again immediately displaying the hello why because create server will take time to execute the code until that time what will happen our our compiler is going to call this line of code when it's available that will available but this is not going to enter block this line of code that is the use of the asynchronous programming means everything you can see that the concept called callback what is callback you have to understand the concept callback callback means when this function going to be called when this function going to be called this function is going to execute when that is going to execute that time only after the function is successfully executed this is going to call this function that is actually use of the callback function callback means this function going to execute when this function is actually completed its task is going to send you signal okay my task is completed that is called the callback concept due to that whatever programming you are going to write in the uh, node just in future all the programming should be a this type of callback function I mean, everything should be a non blocking function normally I mean, nothing going to block everything should be a asynchronous programming due to that you can see that here i have creating a request listener means when the data is received that time this server is created that time only this going when until on, on, unless you did not open this one it's not going to call because request is not reached to there that's the reason everything in this application is a asynchronous okay got it now initial test what you did we have created a server and that server we have created that server we have created simple write a data 
let's go and read this file read this index.html and response and display that data in our browser that is the one thing we have to do then we'll go learn about different different stuff let me go and create suppose file dot js okay let me copy this one guys for a better understanding we'll copy this one go to file dot js okay now what happening i have imported a http to create a server then same way i'll go and import the file fs means file stream is going to read the file stream now your task is going to read the file first you have to read the this file then after you read this file what will do we will have to render the data from this file to our server our response to read a file you have an object of fs fs means file stream okay this is the file stream one and fs dot sorry read the files read the file read the file then fs fs is the file um, file stream uh, object fs dot read read file so read the file what file you are going to read you are going to read the index dot html then you have to write it here index dot html you are going to read index dot html after because just imagine read the file means you have to read the file until and unless your file is going to read you are not going to block your code right you are not going to block your code everything in the um, node js is asynchronous nature means everything you have to give the time when the your program when your file is getting read uh, complete read that time that time only you're going to get the data for that reason everything can see that there is a callback you can see the concept called callback callback means when you asynchronously read the entire content of a file is saying that read file is going to read your whatever file you provided here that is going to read here but just imagine reading a file suppose you have a 1 mb file so reading that 1 mb file will take time right but that time is going to be block the entire program no it's not going to block the entire program that is the design of a node.js means nothing going to block everything going to work independently everything going to work in their way that's the reason when the file is reading reading in the background once the file is ready to once the file is completely read by the system then only it's going to give a callback just imagine i repeat it again callback means always understand the callback concept means it's actually a mechanism when your task is going to be complete that time only that callback going to be called suppose you are executing thousand line of code after thousand lines code is executed then you want to execute another callback function means this function going to be called that's the reason this fs read file means is going to read the first file once the file once the file getting read I mean, totally complete read then it's, then it will give you a signal okay my the file is getting read by complete got read read then what will happen it's going to be callback function this callback function you can see that there is two parameter available one is error another one is data what is error what is data means error means if so something happened to this file suppose this file is not exist and suppose file is corrupted and this read file is not able to read the file you will get the error you can just create an error error object this is the error object you can give any name you can give your name anything you can give your name then okay the is callback is same as event driven okay i'm going to explain that one okay then a read file is going to be read this one then what happened this error is the uh, first parameter which is going to say you if any error to this reading file is going to store here but if there is no error there is another argument called data attribute what is data attribute data is saying after is going to read entire file after it's going to read entire file enter data from this file whatever data will come from this file is going to store inside the data that is called the data one now the then what will do then what will do then this is going to be call then this is going to be call inside that if error if error I mean error means you are going to show the if there is an error then what will do you will send the message right there is an error if there is no error what will happen you want to send this data to our browser that's the reason we will handle the error later 
फास्ट डिस्प्ले द ओके फास्ट डिस्प्ले द डेटा डिस्प्ले द डेटा व्हाट विल डू वी हैव अ रिक्वेस्ट एंड रिस्पांस गाइस यू हैव अ रिक्वेस्ट एंड रिक्वेस्ट मींस व्हाट एवर विल कम दैट इज अ रिक्वेस्ट व्हाट एवर यू विल सेंड दैट इज अ रिस्पांस हियर यू वांट टू डिस्प्ले समथिंग मींस यू सेंड समथिंग दैट्स द रीजन यू हैव टू यूज द रिस्पांस व्हेन यू सेंड समथिंग यू हैव टू यूज द रिस्पांस ऑब्जेक्ट when you get something get means you get some data about the um, request then you have to use the request object okay don't you have to understand the request and response the request and response is the preliminary construct of a browser server then when you get the you have to send the data to the client then you have to use the response then response dot write what you going to write write means you want to write the data what you going to write what data you want to write you want to write the data this data what about data you have a read read from this file you want to send this data to the to the response okay once the response is done then you have to end one means you are saying that okay my response is done there is nothing is to send now you can see that this is done okay what we did first we have create a server last example we create a server then we are imported the file server file stream the file server stream uh, our uh, this uh, namespace or this library this is used to manipulate the file what happening if you are going to read the file you have to go into fs dot read the files in read the files there is a two argument one is index dot html then the first one is index dot html this is the file name you want to provide where you want to read the file our file is index dot html created then this is the callback function after the file read it's going to give us this callback then what happening in this case in this case what happening there is a two parameter one is error and another data error will come when there is there any error to read this file and if data will come when the file is successfully read by the system then when you read the data then response will write you have to write the response write the data to the response response means you want to send the data then end the response okay let's go and run this application we'll see after running this application we can able to see this file in our browser or not okay okay which data will load read okay the data is okay let me tell you the this data suppose after read file means okay just imagine i am opening this in notepad i i i will tell you to okay, read this file means you are going to read this entire string right you are going to read this entire string means after you read this thing whatever data you read inside this file this this data is going to store inside this data variable you can give any name what index.html index.html contain all this data right doc type html head all this thing contain after read this data this data going to store inside this data variable you can give the file data you can give any name it's up to you it's, it's, this is just a variable name you can give any name after reading this industrial html whatever content inside this industrial html going to store inside this file data and this file data we are going to send to the browser to do a response okay now let's go and run this file our file name is file.js node space file dot js once you click on enter what happening is running successfully if i go to browser and refresh you can see that last second what happening you can see that you can see that it is displaying welcome to node js why it is displaying welcome to node js because this content the Uh, this 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 data is content the welcome node same way if i go and copy paste the welcome to node js welcome to file library let's see the display the data welcome to node js welcome to file library means whatever data inside your this html you can able to see inside if you right click and view source right click view source you can see whatever inside your file whatever file inside this industrial html is going to display this data here okay data means 
the what i'm trying to say it here if you want to display any html file you can display any html file in your application then just go and import the file required then read the file and display the data okay this is the basic of a reading a file in the javascript in the node.js then what we cover then first we have created a server first one created a server okay then read the file and display the file content inside the content in response or browser okay now got it i have created a file i have created industrial html file then this file i have created here and whatever the based on request i'm going to display the data now suppose you want to create a application application means suppose you want to create a um, just a second so you want to create a website and a website that contain uh, suppose about page then this contain suppose um, contact page this contain different different type of page right suppose example i am going for from website application to web app application suppose you want to develop a application and that application contain one or two page suppose one is home page two is suppose the about page third one is your first contact page so we have three pages now what we will do we have to create a system in such a way if someone go and type here contact go to type contact here then we are going to display the contact page here if someone go and write about here then we're going to display about page here if you don't want one if someone will write home here are not going to write anything also we're going to display the home page here means how we can go and read this one read this uh, parameter and display the data based on this parameter got it here what we did we have a read the file and display the data now this read file will let it make it a little bit dynamic dynamic means based on the kind based on the request from the server based on the request from the url based on that we are going to read the file and display the data okay let's go and create one folder suppose called color start suppose uh, create the folder and name it suppose uh, files for example files here i have created three files one is home.html another one is uh, about.html third one is sorry about.html and the third one is contact.html you can create simultaneously with me uh, you can also create this same thing suppose home i'll do html5 uh, this is the h1 tag sorry h1 tag suppose this is called home a okay, home the same way i go to about this the html let's create html and create about go to contact the credits let me create the same page again and again okay my h1 tag contact suppose contact here we have created three files the files we have created about then go contact then go home we have three h1 files now let's go and create a application in that application based on the url so someone going to send home or someone going to send uh, about or if someone going to send um, uh, contact we are going to display the other specific one otherwise we are going to send file pages not found okay let's go and create one another file called suppose website dot js for example website js is our file same we have to do if you know that if a file you have to copy this one and I'm, I'm not writing the same code again and again you have to import the HTTP, then you read the files, then you have to read these things. Now, here we are reading the files, but the question is here, this reading files will be based on our URL. Based on the URL means whatever URL pass here, here only, based on that, we have to read the files. Now, our structure will be, we are going to read the URL got it we have to go 
and re read the URL. Go to read, read the URL. Now for that to read the URL, we have to import the library called URL library. Var URL equal to equal URL. Okay. We have to first read the URL. It means URL library is used to read the URL structure. URL structure means you know whatever I am going to pass here, all are called as the URL, right? URL. If I going to pass URL or if I going to pass this query string or anything else, pass. This is all the part of my is the all are part of my URL, right? I think you people know all these things, right? Basic of what is the URL and all the query parameter. If you don't know, I'm going to explain all these things later. But as of now, I'm expecting people know all these things. Let's go to read the URL structure. URL means suppose you want to read the what is the URL name, what is the query string, lot of thing you want to read. Then you have to import the URL structure. Now, our intention is we have to read the path. If it is a home or it's a about or it's a contact, whatever we are going to pass, first we have to read this path. Then based on that, we have to go and explain all these things. We have to go and read about all these things. We have to do the latter programming. Now, you to read the URL, we have to import the URL package. I mean, URL library imports. Now, first go and read about the URL. Now, suppose you want to read the URL. First, suppose you have to go and let me let me remove this one. We are not going to we will write the letter. Read the URL. To read the URL, we have to use the request object. Now you will ask why request object? Because as I told, whatever you will get, whatever you will receive from the client, client from the any process, that is called request. Whatever you will send, that is the response. That's the reason. I am sending the request. Where I am sending the request? I am sending the request from the browser. Means this is my UI part, and this is going to send the request. That's the reason. What happening? We are going to get the data from the request. When you receive something, you have to request. When you send something, the response. Now, this request contain URL because because the url is the part of request right because we are sending data we are you are you are sending data from ui to we are sending the data from ui to node js server that's the reason we are going to use the request url let's see what is the request url we are getting for that reason response dot write write it right request dot url okay. response dot end we'll go one by one first you have to understand this concept first we'll go one by one then we'll go for the other things the node website dot js okay if you go here and refresh you can see that i can able to see the contact same way if i write about you can go to the about if i use the suppose home i can use the home if i don't pass anything i'll get blank path got it i got it based on the path suppose i am passing here uh, uh, suppose about then i've got about if i pass contact i'm going to contact if i do, if i want to use lot of thing then i have to going to use the lot of thing okay now url we are not we are going to use in the latter classes but as of now let's first get the ur request url now if you're going to store this one what i'll do if i go and get bar suppose file name equal to what will do whatever file will pass you pass about then what will do you have to go file name equal to directory plus files plus I'll explain everything don't worry request dot
guys let, let you understand there is a lot of thing i have written here a lot of thing i have written here you have to understand first this all these things i have declared a variable called file name i think you got already all these things now you have to understand this this um, escape symbol right this is a single quote symbol now there is a two way you can concard a string in javascript okay concatenation you have to understand first this one then we will go for this one concat means how you suppose you have a var one var suppose name equal to node another one is var name two equal to js first understand this thing will go later to concat this thing suppose i have declaring var display name equal to name one name plus name two is one thing suppose you want to you want to add node js version one then what will do you have to write it plus here then we'll go right suppose hyphen hyphen version 16.4 you can see here what i'm doing here this is a string concatenation here what happening you have to go for plus plus is used to string concatenation then you have to follow the same thing but you can see here what problem is happening i am using plus 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 all the places right this is the older way of concat a string but instead of doing that what happening nowadays there is another way you can concat the string suppose display name 2 equal to you have to use the uh, this uh, escape symbol escape one escape symbol code then write the dollar and this curly bracket then in, this is the place where you can pass the actually dynamic parameter this is the one way same way this is the name two and here can simple pass this one these are different different way to concat the string this this part and this part both are equal but nowadays most people are using this one because this is a little bit we are not using plus symbol this is a, this is a bit literally this is basically programmers are using nowadays for that reason i have used this symbol okay this i have used a dollar symbol for dynamic one now first one will be the let me remove this these things let me comment it down okay comment it down now you have to first understand what is a dir name dir name let me explain what is the dir name okay this dir name is called the global variables the global variables suppose in your application you want to know your current executable directory means current executable directory means suppose just an example instead of writing file name here i will do one thing i'll write directory name here and let it go and run it <coughs> if i click refresh you can see that it's saying c drive training node js code means saying that my code is executing in this folder if, if you open this one you can see that in my c drive there is a node js inside that i have a code one i have a code one inside that only i have a my application running if you use the dir name underscore underscore dir name is a global variable a predefined variable given by the node js using this one you can get the current execute folder structure means wh which folder your application going to be execute <clears throat> got it this is my dir name what i'm saying i am saying my file name will, is going to read the file right for that reason we are using the dir name dir name let me give us the current application root path got it it will give us a current application root path our root path is this one code c training node js uh, this is the root path inside that we are running our application then got it the user dr name then i will get from here then my path will be files my path will be the files inside files i have a page then requested a url requested a url as i told earlier if the requested a url will be there 
then if you about you're going to give us about uh, like slash about if you if you're giving us anything based on the whatever you are going to pass that is going to give us the same way it is going to give a requested url or expecting we are going to pass about contact other things right then after that i have to use dot html means my path will be looks like this if i run this application my path will be looks like this if you run this application you can see that my path is c training node.js code this is my folder inside that files is a folder another one is about html if i go and open this one you can see that this is my file structure right this is my entire structure the same way if now i have got the file name the same file name displaying here now i will go and run this file and display our application okay previously what i did to read a file we are going to use this command right then copy this one here copy and paste it now request to url i have explained this request to url the request to url is used to used to read the current url of the request okay got it now instead of passing the index html statically here what i'll do i'll pass the file name I'll pass the file name. Let's go and run this application. We'll see what happening. Okay. If I go and click on about, you can see I can about see the about. If I go and pass here, suppose uh, contact, I can see the contact page. You will see what happening. We'll see what happening. Why we are getting the error is showing us the error but let's go and display the error and console dot log error we'll see what actual problem happening here ah, it is playing i don't know what happened that time and next time Okay, let me read. <coughs> no file or directory. C file fab icon dot html. Okay. What happening? I'll let you know. Okay. What happening in our application when you are requesting when you are requesting it's expecting we are calling internally the fab icon dot html internally is going to call the fab icon dot html internally why is that going to call i let you know when you are requesting any server that time they are expecting are expecting one favorite icon you know the application con here you can see the fab icon lot of thing right the same way they're expecting one fab icon in our application due to that what happening we have written in such a way if there is fab icon is there if this fab icon is going to this way that's the reason it's throwing an error what we'll do now we have to check when the request is coming what is the request is coming then based on that we'll write our program i let you know what happening here when you're displaying any contact or anything that time only we are getting the url and that url we are passing the data get the file name and that file name we are that file name we are displaying inside this one okay let us go and handle the error <clears throat> handle the error means suppose if we are getting any error in the application that time what we are going to do if error 
if error then response dot send response dot write not found we have to read response dot end let's see what happened same error is coming You can see now what happening the problem. The problem is internally Node.js when you are requesting any we are requesting any kind of application internally they are calling the fab icon. Okay, that's the reason what happening due to we have written a code in such a way that okay when we are getting any request is going to convert to HTML, read the files and doing the data. In that case, what happening? It's reading the data. The problem is when there is some error, that time application getting unexpected getting closed. Due to that, what happening? If error will come, we are not going to execute this line of code. You got my point? When the error will come, we are not going to execute this line of code. Due to that, if error will come, we are going to return the response. This return the end means we are not going to execute rest of the part. You know in the programming if you are going to execute the program and if you don't want to do it further execution just simple write the return statement return means the further from apart from this line we are not going to execute the code due to that what if any error will come that time we are going to display the data but we are not going to execute the further that's the reason if you go and type your a b c d you can see that is going to give you no found not found because it's only going to execute this way it's not going to execute this line of code that is the use of our return statement return means after the write after the response end just close the close the connection here close the data here no need to go further from here to here that is the use of our return statement and what we did it here <coughs> first we get the file name then after get the file name, we will get the directory based directory name and prepare the file. Then we go there and read the files. After reading the files, we simple read the files. If there is an error, displaying not found. If there is no error, simple write the data to the response. That is the use of a request and response. Okay. Now here, based on our requirement, we have developed the site. Means whatever file we are going to create here whatever file you are going to create here based on that we are going to display the data this is the basic way you can create a server we can create a dynamic website of your site okay this is not a api development this is a basic website we will go to that part like how to create an api lot of thing but as of now using the http http means the http of uh, um, predefined http of uh, node.js how to go and create lot of thing in our application okay this is the all about our, our Node.js website development. Suppose you want to develop any kind of a website, basic static website or something like that, then you have to use this concept of website. Okay, this is a simple line of code. Using that, you can you can read and display the data in a browser. Basic things, right? Clear? In what we cover, we have created a server, then we create a website, then we create a file, we have read a lot of things. Now let's go and discuss about advanced server. And the question what is advanced server advanced server means here we are using the we are, where suppose you want to 
whatever path you are passing here right whatever path you are passing here based on that we are doing a programming suppose you write if the url is this and do this if the url is this and do that suppose you want to write this way if request dot url equal to equal to slash home then i want to do this thing then else if request url equal to equal to about i want to do something you can write this way right suppose you want to develop an application in that application based on the url you want to do specific task then you have to write all the program here to solve this kind of problem to solve this kind of problem then what happening there is a separate library available in node.js that is called express.js express.js is a library is developed by the express.js that is used to develop the web api okay this is this is the basic creation of a server this the top of this http top of this http express.js develop their own rest api layer where you are going to create a web server okay let's go and focus on that express.js how to install express.js how to use that express.js in our application i let you know express.js is used to i i let i write it down express.js is used to develop the api application api okay. express.js is used to develop the api using the express.js we are going to develop the api application okay let's go and use the express.js and configure the express.js in our application let's see what are the things is given by the express.js okay before going into express.js you have to understand the npm package manager okay you have to understand the concept called npm package manager i understand what is npm what is stand for pa npm package npm stand for node package manager n stand for node node package manager it is called a npm package manager okay what is the manager? if you are from different background suppose you are from dotnet or something or uh, java or um, php dotnet you know the concept called um, our nougat package manager and uh, in java you are using barbell or something you are using and php you are using composer there is n number of different different repository where the code actually exists means npm is a repository it's a place where you are we are going to store our all the codes let me show you if you open npmjs.com then you can able to see that this is the repository repository where actually our code is like suppose you want to work on angular suppose you are work on react you are work on different different library all the libraries are available here this is the repository for code library now suppose if you want to use express where you get the express you are going to download the express configure no right the there is two way either you can download the um, express and configure the express in a local instead of doing that what we will do we are going to use the npm js library npm js syntax using this npm js we are going to use the we are going to configure that uh, express js in your application before going that let me go and uh, we'll open the express js site okay what is saying express js fast on oriented minimalist web framework for node.js the same thing whatever it express js is same as our http server okay this is http server means whatever http worker doing in using http one the same thing we are going to use the express what will ask a question what will ask a question what is the benefits of express that i'm going to explain later because express js is designed top of the node.js framework okay on top of the http framework this is http library let's go and install the express then we'll know what is the advantage what is the disadvantages okay to install the express says what you will do you have to write the command called npm if you open the express the site also is saying npm express slash slash save what we'll do i'll go and copy the so npm install okay let me paste it down paste it npm install express hyphen hyphen save npm start for node package manager you are saying that hey node package manager install install means you have to install which package express package save means i want to save 
this package in my local okay in npm there is a two things one is a global package one is a local package i am not going to focus on npm but you have to know that npm is used to install the third party package from the npm js directory okay and save is used to save that package in your local okay if you once you enter npm install express slash save if you click on enter it's going to be install that package in our local machine in local machine in our local folder which folder we are going to work that folder is going to store if you open this one if you open our code folder you can see that after you install the uh, express.js there is a node modules folder got created this is the folder where all the modules going to get your node package manager right all the modules going to store a node package manager if you open the node modules you can see that uh, there is a concept called express this should be express.js 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 all the library code everything is present inside this express.js okay we are not going to enter this library we are not going to discuss but let's go and discuss how to use this express library means express.js library in your node.js application clear then to install the node.js express.js you have to go to the npm package and type npm install express hyperment js please do it in your local machine if you want to install you have to do the same way now let's go and create the same website same website using the express.js okay now as i told express.js if they have written express.js is used to web framework for the node.js means express.js is used to read doing the same thing as the whatever HTTP module is doing but they have some lot of different um, uh, uh, use thing available we are going to use in our application let's go first create the express because trust me if you work on any of the node node.js in the future all the companies are using the express js as their server no one going to use this traditional http all are going to use the express js express js in their for development let's go and develop this one for that one sorry let me add one express dot js this is your express dot js to use express we have to declare a variable same way we have declared a variable suppose http required http same way let me explain one variable called express and we have to write the require and inside that we have to use express means we are using the express js express we are import this express library in our application then we have to use this express library and develop our application let's go then we have to declare another variable import or use express library then we will create a variable called app we have to create a variable called app you can develop a name, name and initialize the library you have to initialize the library it is initialize the means create the object of the library int initialize the express initialize the library means we have initialized the express then store the initialization in the app folder you can give any name i have given the app it's a standard name we are giving the app then what will do we have to run the server right to run the server what will do we write bar will give a server then app dot listen same way if you go to website they're going to be http create server then we have to do the listen but in the express day the same thing we are doing we have created an app initial then app dot listen we have to give the port name which port you want to run so i am giving 3000 is the port then after you run if you want to do some kind of callback this is a callback you have to do some kind of callback then you want to execute this one then what i'll do i'll write here console dot log my server server running successfully what i did if you compare between this http to this one this http to this one nothing difference both are same but the only difference is just create a do app dot listen app app is the instance of the express this means we initialize the express then listen listen means you have to listen from which port we have listened in the 3000 port then 
after you listen if you have to display something server such as running flow or not done you have to display the same thing let's go and run this application then we have to load then express dot js you can see saying server running successfully if i go and open this one in localhost okay you can see it's saying cannot get something okay that will go, go to display uh, discuss later but you can see that now our application getting run successfully but is giving an error because why it's giving an error that i'm going to explain later okay you can see here what i did i, I did the same server setup i have import the express i have created initialize the express then i just create a server okay this is the information about server but suppose you want to know uh, the server information what is the address what is the port you are running suppose you want to know the server address server url server base address now our address is localhost localhost means it's 127.0.0.1 right same thing right then how will you get the server address port for that reason if you want to get it and simple write console.log server server is the object of whatever server right server dot address okay then host address sorry address the same way copy it and paste it by port go and refresh it you can see that they are saying sorry my is displaying address as code code because it's running on the local one 3000 is our port is displaying port then server running successfully this is all about the things additionally if you want to learn you can run it but our not objective is this one but our objective is how to create a express application but you can see that what happening here if you're running the api if, if you're running the server that time if you go and write anything you display cannot get slash if i write something here abc it's going to say cannot get abc means whatever path if you don't pass anything there is a root path if you don't pass anything there is a root path but it means it's a root path then if you pass anything then it's it's a that path suppose i am passing abc this is the path is abc if i don't pass anything the path is slash means what express is saying express is saying okay when you are going to create a server that time if any request will come to your web server you have to handle that request handle the request means you have to write each and every path code to each and every path code where you are going to handle the request means to access the path suppose in the case if i go to add app.get app.get i'll explain what is get the root path if someone is going to access the root path then what will happen Next, i'll explain request and response what is going to happen then you simple write a response dot send home page i'll explain don't run don't run issue i'm going to explain all these things okay it's saying home page means here you have to understand the concept of get means app is saying when someone going to request as a slash get then what you are going to display the same way if you go and write if someone is going to write the suppose about what you are going to display support is called about page suppose same way if you are going to develop suppose called suppose contact what you are going to do because the express is giving all this way to, de to define the path but before going into all these things you have to understand the concept called this get what is get what is post what is put we have to first understand okay let's go to our initial uh, designing because i know some of you know all these things but let me repeat it again also when you send some data from your client to server when you send some data from client to server 
that time we are expecting what we are expecting we are expecting the data but just imagine suppose you are sending the data to your friend in your whatsapp either you will send in text format either you will send audio format or you are sending the video format means you will send the data but the data will go in different different kind of format that format data when you send in the in the in our programming in our in our web application when you send the data from client to server that time there is some different different kind of data format you have to send let's go and discuss what are the this data format and how what is the use of this get and post and all these things first to send to send send the data from client to server we require below information first what is the first one the first one will be the where where to set means that's the example of your, your whatsapp message so in whatsapp you are sending the message to your friend you have a n number of a friend right suppose you are sending to your friend x or friend y or friend z or friend a now you know that which friend you are sending means as a as a person to send some message to someone you have to know the which one is sending the first one will be the you have to know the address means where you are going to send the data means you are, you are sending your message to your mother your father someone you are not going to send the same message to other people right the same way if you are going to send the data to the server you have to first know the server address got it guys you have to first know the server address this address also known as endpoint this is a technical term in the programming where mostly used endpoint or address this is called the address means where you want to send the request means when you say open the facebook where suppose you are opening the uh, suppose gmail now you know that when you are writing a mail in the gmail you know that you know where you want to send the data right and where you are going to send the mail the same way when you are going to interact with a server first you have to know that to where i want to to whom i am to inter interact that is the first one the address you have to first on, understand the concept called address you have to understand all this guys this is the important things so without this you are not going to write the server server and the server programming okay the first one is the address and endpoint always remember you have to always understand about the endpoint in your application our endpoint is localhost 3000 this is our server address but inside that we are going to explain a lot a lot of things but our preliminary our address is localhost 3000 in our case the address of our application is for a second the address of our application is localhost 3000 got it same way suppose in a, in a future you develop your application in that application your endpoint may be suppose http yes www.yourdomain.com okay this is the address in future will ex, um, future this is the address okay first of all understand your endpoint or your address of your server second to send a data we have to check how which format you are sending the format Put first in, in the format as i explain suppose you want to send a message to your friend either in the whatsapp you either you send as text or you can send as suppose media media means either voice or video imagine when you're going to send the data to the your friend either you can go for text or go for media this two way we are sending right we are not going to send it on the, another way same way when you are sending the data to the server either you can send as a text format or you can send as a this multimedia format okay this text format can send as a json json or then text and this media media you can send as a multi-part 
Okay, I will explain what is multi-part letter of this class. First, you have to understand these are the two way that you have to send the data. Now, text, you want to send the text, you want to send a media. Text means suppose you are sending sending the data to me. Suppose in an application you are doing a simple login. Login means you have a username, password, you want to click on this, you want to send the data. That is textual data. But suppose you are uploading a file, suppose you are uploading a profile picture, that is a media file. So sending the media, that is a different way. Okay. That is a multi-part. Means in text you can send the JSON or in media you can send the multi-part. These are different way you have to send. But this is the format of a data. But the format of data you have to know that but when you send the format of a data then you have to know that the type of data you are sending means just example i am sending you one thing suppose you have a gift box okay you have a gift box now suppose you have a text message either you can send in whatsapp or you can call them or you can suppose you have text message you can call them you can suppose uh, mail them or you can suppose um, send a message means same message one text you can send in multiple different different way one is either you can call you can call okay I, you, you have to have a text or pass it then you can mail it or you can send via whatsapp or you can sms it also just imagine same data but you are sending the data in different different way but you are saying that I have two format. I have a media format. I have a text format. But when you are sending this format, you have to say that, okay, I am sending this format, but this way I am sending the data. Which way? Suppose you want to pass a message. Either you can call them, you can SMS them, you can mail them, you can do different, different type of way. That is called the medium. Which medium or which method you are sending the data? Okay, you have to understand all these things, guys. First one, you have to know the address. Second one, you have to know that what data I am sending. I am sending text data or I am sending multimedia data. Third one, whatever data I am sending to this endpoint, what is the method of data I am sending? Means I am sending as a message or I am sending as a SMS or sending as a call or sending as a something. That is called a communication medium. That is called a method. Means when you are going to send a data to a server, you have three things to understand. One is address, then you have a data type, then you have method. I understand these things. When you send any request, send any request to the server, we have to follow below flow. Develop flow, you know the address, you know the data types, you know the method. Okay, these three we have to first understand, then we will go and explain about it, gate and all lot of things. I know some of you already know about all these things, but for your better understanding, I am going to explain all these things. Okay, address we have explained, address means you know that our address is this one, our address is this one is our address, right. Now, second one is data type. Data type means, I am giving an example. Suppose, I am opening this new text site. Here, we have this kind of data. We have this form. When you click on this form, what will happen? I need to send the data. This data you can see, this data, all are the textual data. Means, I am going to send the data as a normal format. Means, I am going to send as a text format. But, the final one is method. Okay. The method, how many way you can send the data to the server? What is the method of data sending? If you, if you heard the term like, there is a get method, there is a post method, there is a put method, there is a delete method. There is also n number of method. But in our today's session, today's session, we are going to focus on this four method. What is the method? Method means when you are going to send the data to this address, which which method mean which way you want to send the method means the way way of data sending okay there is each and every method each and every method that is specific use what is the use of a get post put and delete we are going to explain later of the classes but 
you have to understand that when you want to send a data to the server uh, these three things you have to first understand let's go and focus about this get then post then put and delete okay let's go and start with get get means get means when you open something in the browser when you open something in the browser if i go open the new type then i go to about but then i go to new batches if i click any of the things you can see that my url getting changed okay my url getting changed in that time what happened this kind of a data if the data you are passing inside the url that called as a get method i'll explain what is the get i don't understand first the get you have to understand if we are passing the data in in the form of url we call as get means when you send any data to the server in the form of url then we call as a get method example if i go here and write about you can see that i am passing this as a url format means this is my url this is called the get one due to that what happening we are saying here in our in our code if a app dot get we are using the get format get method here get is the get method is saying that if the path will be the slash or path will be the about the path will be contact what i want to do it here the same way if i go here and simple write about a second let me stop it and it's not and again if you go and write it about you can see it's giving about our space because why this about is the get one due to that i have written here get but just imagine instead of a get if i go write it post okay i will write it post and say the stop it and rerun if you go and refresh it you can see that it's saying cannot get about okay means first you have to understand the concept of get get means if you are going to send any data in the used form of url we call as a get get you have to pass here now but same way to receive any get request from the serve get request from the client then only what we'll do we have to use this get method same way if you want to access any data in form of post i'm going to explain about the post letter the form of a post you have to use the post event but let's go and first focus on this get one then we'll go for the post one okay let's go and explain uh, discuss about this get one as i told get means if anything you are passing in inside the url structure that that is called as a get let's go and focus on this get one okay. let me make it okay now we are in about page now we have to know that this is the about page means when the about route will go to call slash means it's a path root path okay slash means this slash okay slash about you are saying that when the request is get then we are going for the about page okay now what we'll do let's play with the this get one what are the different different things is given by the get one okay Now, let's go and pass some query param here. If you do, now, as I told, if you want to pass the data in form of URL, form of a URL means suppose you want to send a data in the URL format, that time you have to use the get. Now, how are you going to send the data in the form of a URL? That's the reason in our programming we have a concept called query string query string means we have to understand first query string get we have a concept called query string 
pull string means you want to pass a data in url pass data in url in string format okay we're going to pass string or text format means when you want to go and suppose about in about we want to go and pass some data suppose pass data suppose name equal to node js is the data right name equal to node js now our intention how to read this name of a node js and how to access this query string as i told suppose you are if you want to develop any application all the application some of the application you suppose you want to do filter you want to do some kind of stuff then so you have to use the concept of query string query string means you want to pass the data in form of the query string format this is the query string the query string content key and value what is the query string format the query string format is is the key and value if you want to use key string, before that you have to use the question mark question mark is used to indicate that this is a query string then you have a key and you have a value if you want to pass multiple key values then you have to go and operator then you have a key one and value a value one you have to define this way but don't mix this key will be unique you have to use the key as a unique value will be anything but key always be unique means i cannot if i go if i want to do anything suppose node js and suppose age equal to 20 this is my format this way i want to send the data to the server means i have a two query param here one query param two attribute one is name another one is age got it let's go and read how we can go and access that query string whatever query string you uh, develop how to go and access that query string in our application okay for that to access a query string in our application the, there is a predefined ready-made function available ready-made attri attribute available inside the request why request as i told we are getting the data from the client only means the, the ui only that's the reason we are using the request because you are receiving the data means we are sending the data sorry you are sending the data to the server that's the reason we are using the concept of a request to get the query string same way what we will do to get a query string we have used request we have used request dot query to understand request dot query is used to get the query string data in form of object explain let me uh, stop it and rerun you can see we are able to get the data name equal to json age equal to 20 the same way if i go and remove this one you can able to see only name if I go and remove entire thing, we can able to see only blank. There is no nothing will be there. If I go to pass anything, we can able to see all the data. Right? If you want to add any other thing, suppose you want to change 20 21, you can able to see the 21. And here we know that how to access the data of the query string inside our application. Clear guys, all about things. How we can go to access the query string in the application request dot query string. Same as suppose you want to log it, suppose the console dot log request dot query dot suppose name means why name the co query is the object, right? Object means it's giving you this type of format. Suppose you want to access a specific element, then you have to use the specific element name because you already know the all these things, right? Query contains the name attribute. Due to that, it's a query dot name. Let me run it again. If I go and refresh it here, you can see that console it's giving Node.js because I'm using query dot name, which is the all about things. Okay. This way you can go and access the the data of data of the query string inside our application using the get format. 
चलो व्हाट वी लर्न इन द केस ऑफ गेट गेट इज द मेकानिजिंग इफ आर गोइंग टू सेंड द डेटा टू द सर्वर इन फॉर्म ऑफ इन द फॉर्म ऑफ व्हाट द फॉर्म ऑफ यू आर एल नाउ देर इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट कॉल कोरिस्ट्रिंग द कोरिस्ट्रिंग इज यूज टू क्वेश्चन इज द डेटा हुए यू आर गोइंग टू पास द डेटा इन द यू आर एन फॉर्म ऑफ स्ट्रिंग ओके इफ यू टू पास द क्वेश्चिंग यू टू यूज द क्वेश्चन की वर्ड देन यू हैव ए की एंड वैल्यू पेयर इफ यू टू पास मल्टीपुल की वैल्यू पेयर यू टू यूज द एंड ऑपरेटर ओके यू टू यूज द एंड ऑपरेटर दिस इज द ऑल अबाउट आवर क्वेश्चन लेट्स गो एंड डिस्कस अबाउट पोस्ट डिस्कस अबाउट पोस्ट Before going into post, let's go into deep dive into request format. When you send request, actually what happening inside the server? Let me draw something. Okay. Just example, you are you have a web server. Okay, this is your web server. This is your web server. Okay. And you are sending some data. Data means you are sending some piece of data. Let's me define what are the piece of data content. I'm sending some data, and this data, when you send to the server, what are the things we are sending? Okay. As I told earlier, first one is your, first one is your address, one is your address. Second one is your data type, data. What data you are sending? सर्भर दाइम A data contain means a request contain a request contain these four part. What is the part? Because the header part we missed. That part I'm going to explain in case of post. We have different different type of structure. The first one will be the header. First one is header. The first one is the address. Which address we are going to send? Second one is your. Second one is your header. third one will be your data and fourth one is our method to let me write it, write it down the first one is your address second one is your header header the third one will be the body or is called as data Last one is the method. Okay. When you send a data to the server, that time these are the four information will go to the server. I think you already got the address. What is the address? Then we'll discuss. You already got the method. Then we'll discuss header and body. Header means, guys. What is the header means? When you send a data, the header contain the basic information about the request. What is basic information about the request? Means, means who are you sending? Means suppose you are you are consuming the application in the browser. It will say that where it is going to consume. Who who is the client? Suppose who is browser you are using? All the information about the client, all the things is going to store inside the header. Okay, header is the sorry, header is the part. Where we are going to store the information about the request. Okay, let me write it down. What is the use of a header? Header. Where you will you, you will store the request information like browser agent. Browser agent means which browser going to send? Authentication code, authentication, origin. Lot of thing we are going to uh, 
store inside the header. Header part we are not going to discuss, but just you have to know that header contains the information about the request. Let's go to the body. So we call the data. Okay. Data. Now, the data, in case of get, we are sending the data in form of query string. Right. The same way, if you want to send the data, if you are going to send the data in the form of post, you have to send in the form of body. To understand, in case of get, when you send a data to the when you send data to the, to the server, you have to send the form of query string or URL. But when you send the data in form of a post, you have to send in the form of a body. Then to understand the data, whatever going to pass to the server in form of post, all the data will go to the body. Body means the request body or call as a payload. As in, uh, always remember, this payload means it's a content. In future, when you go to development, all people are going to say that payload. Payload means you understand it's a data of a post event. Means when you send data to the server in form of post, you want to send the data in the form of body or payload. Now you ask me a question, why the post is required? The answer is, suppose you want to develop one login screen. Just imagine you want to develop one login screen. That login screen, username, password, you are not going to send in the form of a query string, right? Because query string should not contain any sensitive data. Only contain data, whatever you are going to use in the application, like ID, or suppose some kind of filter. You are going to use that, you want to pass inside this here. But in case of in case of post, what happening? Suppose when you are going to submit the data, submit the group of data, submit, suppose you want to submit this data, this data to server, this kind of data you want to send in the form of post. Got it? The use of post. Post means you want to send the data to the server. Anyhow, get and post is going to send the data. But in case of post the data, you want to send the data in form of body, means no one is going to see the data. Means no one going to means it's not going to pass in the form of query string. Because if it is a query string, then anyone is going to change, right? If I query string means I can choose 20 and 20, I can change 20, right? It's up to me, I can change anything. But if you case of post, in case of post, you are going to send the data to the server in case of hidden or case of the payload data. Let's go and discuss how we are going to implement this post in our application. Okay. For that, what, will, what I am going to do, I am going to create a small web page. In that web page, what will do, I have to create one file and that file content to field and that field, when I am going to post it, how we are going to get and receive the data. Okay. For that, let's go and create the um, one another file called HTTP dot s okay. what i'll do let's go and uh, copy the old code this is the same code copy this one and paste it here paste it here what i'll do now our intention is when someone going to open this http one i'm going to display the html file here like enter your first time last time when someone is going to click it i want to access that username and password okay yeah, I'm going to access that first name and last name. First go and design that page. Suppose let me create and suppose called um, form.html. I'll create form.html. Inside that, what I'll do, I'll create, I'll create the file. Just a second. Okay, I'll create a file. Suppose the file name will be um, Let's go to HTTP. Now, in in our previous example, you can see that in the server uh, to read a file, we are going to so, sorry, sorry, website read a file. We are doing a lot of things. We are importing file server. Then we are doing read a lot of things. Doing. But in case of uh, Express J, suppose you want to read a file, simple go here and write read file. Not read file. You have to go and send file sorry send file what will do going to do it here 
directory name then files then form.html okay we have a lot of code like predefined code written by the express.js using this express.js we are not going to write lot of code as compared to traditional uh, our node application there's a lot of things available here now let me go and write node http dot js okay if you open this one you can see i can able to see this file okay i can able to see this form file let's go and design design this file and we have to first design the form then in the inside the form we have to create a button if you click on the button we will get the data for that to add a form we have to use a form inside that we have to use a first name we have to use suppose first name input Use input type equal to text, then then name equal to suppose first name. Same way, let me break it down. I am designing the form. Then go to the next one. Call I suppose last name. Okay. Finally, we have a button. That button type is submit and suppose submit. Submit. We go and refresh. You can see that we have a basic design. We have a we have a first name. We have a last name. We have a submit. A requirement will be the if you are going to enter the value and if you click on submit, then whatever value I will submit here, I want to display in my page. Simple one. Now. The first one, as I told, I have to send data in form of post, right? In the form, if you are going to send it, first you have to specify the address. Address means you have to go for here. You have to first understand the address. First, you have to pass the address where you have to send the request. Let's go and in our HTTP, let's add another uh, call. Suppose post for suppose submit. Submit. And make it post. Okay, make it post. Do everything. Make it post. Then here, first we have to first we have to set the address because as I told, first part is our address. We have to always specify the address. The same way we have to pass the address. On form to specify the address, you have to use is called the action. The action where what you want to post, where you want to post, you have to post to submit action. Okay. Let's go and refresh it. If you click on submit, it's going to submit one. What it's saying is not happening because we have to rerun the application again. Now we have specified the action. Action is the submit. Means submit is the action of our this one. But as I told, to send a request, we require the last parameter called method. Okay, method should be specified. For that, we have to specify the method here. The method will be post. Method will be the post. Now let's see. We will we'll see that when we enter something i click on submit we have to see whatever data we are enter in this text box to text box how to access this data in form of post okay let's go what i did it here in the action i have given the path name the path name is http what is, what is the path name mm. the path name is submit then the method is post and what is the data the body the data is this one data is this this data is this one okay first time last time is the data now let's go and access the data to access the data what we'll do in the in, in our program 
there is a predefined function predefined attribute available that attribute that attribute is used to access the data for that what we are going to use request dot body as i told when you going to send the data to the server the data will come in the form of body or payload the same way when you submit a data when you post a data that time that data will access by a request using the body payload okay body attribute now what is the request of body let me write it down request body is used to access the post data. whatever data you will post from the client to your server that time that data is going to be accessed inside the request dot body okay let's go and run it let me enter node last one is js if you can submit you can see that nothing is displaying because nothing is displaying now we have a question why nothing is displaying i let you know now the concept is called called middleware okay i i going to discuss about middleware later but what happening in case of request where you are sending the data the data from the this ui to this submit what happening in the background the data will come as a form structure okay the form data will come data will come as a form data to handle that form data we have to use the different library called body parser i am going to explain all these things what happening requested body is going to access the whatever data we have post from here that data should be available inside the requested body the problem is what happening because the api because this express js is able to handle n number of data what is n number of data i told initially we have different type of data types right we have text type we have media type inside the text we have a json we have plain text in the case of media we have multi part we have a n number of different type of data we have a data but data got a different type of data right suppose you have text you have email you have a lot of data now when we are sending the data from this forms to our api that time we have to specify that what data we are actually accessing what type of data we are getting as a form of body because you have to tell to the express js okay whatever data will come to this submit function submit route that data should be a form data or that data should be json data that is a different data what type of data you want to access that data you have to specify here but to specify the data we have to use one third party library called body parser let's go and first install that body parser then use that body parser in our application okay i i repeat it again when you send your data from in case of post in from your um, client from your client to your server node js api that time you have to specify in the api what type of data is coming from the server, coming from the client based on that you have to use the, the based on that the body is going to get the data otherwise body always going to give the null data let me go and first explain about how to use the body parser use of a body parser how to apply that type of data inside our application for that what will do you will go and first install the library called body parser to install a library we have to use npm install body hyphen parser okay. this is used to install the parser then hyphen hyphen set we click on enter it's going to be install the body parser in our project let's wait for some time now you can see that body parser is going to be installed in our application okay now let's go and use that body parser in our application to get the data to use the body parser let's import that library first what is the body parser let pass you pass use then only explain the uh, definition let me create an uh, object called body parser then required then call as body
this body parser is used to encode the request encode the request body data request data means when you are sending the data from the form of a post that time if you have, you have to use the body parser that body parser library is used to encode the data based on our requirement same way for this post suppose we want to encode the data let me define first of you have to encode the data encode the data encode the data let me define one variable suppose um, post encoder then you have to use body parser body parser is the body parser is the uh, name of this uh, variable okay body parser then you have to use encode sorry body parser then url encode then you have to use standard false what is doing let me tell you what what you have written here we have written encode url encoder return the middleware that only parse the encoder bodies okay so encoder bodies only looks for a request where the content type header mismatch the type concept what will do whatever data will come that is going to encode what is going to encode external false means it's external optional allowed to choose between parsing of url encode data between query query param query string param which is false in the query string library when required to it's happening body parser internally using the query string uh, class if you are using external external false means it's not going to execute the query string class okay this is the one of the action this is the predefined library predefined syntax you have to use to access the query string data what is the data body parser dot url encoded you are going to encode the url okay now we have to use this one we have to use this one in the case in the post event for that we have to copy this one and use as a second parameter to use the second parameter means what actually is doing whatever data you are posting from this page to that page it's just pass the data in the form of data body in the form of url body okay it just will pass data and that data we are passing in case of post okay when the data will come it's going to use this encoder to encode the data let's see what happening Okay, when I go and if I go and enter some data here and click on submit, you can see that I'm getting first name and last name. If you look into this code, what I'm doing, I'm just using one other call, it's the post encoder. This, this is the encoder means it's going to be encode the data means this is the this is one of the layer function is going to encode the data whatever coming to the form of post now this is the structure you have to get the data for that you have to use the body parser library the body parser library is tasked to encode the data now we have to encode this data and use the data in form of this one okay now you will ask me what is this third parameter? This third parameter is called as the middleware. We are going to discuss this middleware after lunch, but let's go and discuss other parts. Okay, middleware is a different stop. We have to go and discuss a lot of things in middleware. But as of now, let's go and discuss about how to upload a file. Then we have to discuss a lot of things. Okay, middleware, I'm going to explain how to use a middleware, how to get your own middleware. That time we're going to discuss. Let's go and focus on this this we have completed what we have completed we have completed the gate and post let's go and discuss about the other things that is called the upload suppose we want to go to create a file and that file we're going to upload in our system so the file upload we want to develop how we we'll go and develop the file upload okay put and delete i'm going to explain we are going to work on the mongodb because in when connection with the mongodb that time we're going to create a cloud operation 
in the cloud, cloud operation, we are going to explain how to create a database, how to create a lot of things we are going to discuss, uh, list, edit, delete, lot of things we are going to do. That time we are going to explain the delete and post put. Okay. But as of now, you have to understand how the gate is working, how the post is working, how to get the data, how to display the data. Lot of things discuss, right? The final one we are going to discuss is the upload one. Suppose you want to develop an application and that application you want to upload a file. Okay. Now let's go and design one file and in that file only going to discuss how to upload and do the, how to store the data. Let's go create one file called upload.html. Okay, here let's go and uh, inside that let me uh, first go and create a HTML file, HTML file and suppose this h1 tag, suppose upload. Okay, upload same way, form you have to go and you suppose you have a input type input type that's a file right input type file you have suppose uh, and give name as file done then you have a button which type is uh, submit and the code is upload okay Let's go and um, create another one, copy it one and uh, upload, make it upload, upload as a get, okay, upload as a get, send file as upload.html, okay. What I'm doing, I, I have created one upload path slash upload, then when upload will come, it's going to be sub the file upload.html. If you open and pass it to upload, you can see that I can able to see the upload one. Now my target is, I have to choose the file, I have to choose the file, then once I choose the file, once I click on upload, it's going to upload this file in my server. To upload the file, to upload the file in our application, we have to use a third party library that is called Malter. Okay, what is called the Malter? Let's go first install the, the library called Malter, npm install. Guys, no need to write anything from scratch. Nowadays, you have to follow the what is the predefined library available. Just use that library and execute your code. Your task will be deliver the project and no need to write anything from scratch. Just follow what are the different different library available. You have to use that library. Okay. NPM install Malter. Then you have to write, write say Malter is a library which is used to actually which is used to install the, uh, means upload the files in our server. That it will be installed. Now, Malter got installed. Now, we have to use Malter to upload the files. Now, here you can see that we have upload. Once I click on upload, click on upload. We are going to send the request to our request. In there only we are going to upload, right? For that, what we will do? We will go to, we are going to create another route called the same route with the another only the post one you can create the same route name with multiple method name now it's a get one this is a post one when someone going to access directly it's going to call the get when someone going to access from the post event is going to call as a post okay it's up to you how you're going to design now what i am going to do it now once we click on post now we have to go and access the data. Then that data we are going to use on our application. Now, as I told, to access the data, we have to use this encoder because that, that encoder is used to encode the data. First, we have to use the encoder. Now let's go and uh, response dot send request dot body. We have to see what is the body is coming. Then we'll discuss about all the things. But you have to imagine here we have to pass the action where we have to pass the address first we have to pass the address the address is action the action is where you want to upload the path is upload then method is post right method is post then your another thing you have to write the type is called as encryption type what is encryption type if you, if you remember what i explained in the previous things Okay, just a second. Explain the previous thing. I have told that 
that is called a multi part media means multi part okay what is multi part first understand when you are sending the data the media data to the server suppose you are uploading 5 mb server 5 mb data server is not going to accept 5 mb data at a time it's going to convert the data into multi part and sending the data throughout the network this is a basic networking concept when you are sending the data over to a network all data will go to the server in form of a chunk or form of a packet that packet we call as a multi part multi part means when you are sending the data to the server the data is going to be sent as a multi part for that when you are going to upload a data to the server we have to specify the enc type enc type means encryption type means which encryption type you are sending the data for that reason we have to use the multi part slash form data you have to remember this is a predefined this is a structure you have to follow what is the use of multi part form data means you are saying that okay i want to send the file because file is a media file right you have to send some data the data whatever going to send to the server that should be multiple parts should be go it should go to as a multiple chunk chunk part should be go that's the reason it treat as a multi part slash form data got it now what we will do let's go and run it sorry let's go and upload choose some file and upload it you can see i'm getting blank why i'm getting blank because we are not sending in data in form of body because we are sending the data in form of a file okay means suppose if you want to access if you want to access any data in form of a file then we cannot use the body already remember this body means when you sending the data in the in case where you are sending the data in form body then it is a body means It's just a form data, but when you're going to send the data in form of a file, then you have to understand that is a different structure you have to follow. For that reason, this this request contain this request contain a predefined attribute called files. Understand this this uh, request contain a predefined file is called a files means. when you are sending any files in form of a upload so form of a body then you have to access that data in form of a files but when you are going to access the data inside the form of body you have to access the body then that is the two uses cases right let me go and run the application let's see what data is coming okay let me choose the file let me choose the file then click on upload you can see that nothing is displaying why nothing is displaying because in the express js for doing everything there should be a specific things we have to follow what is specific things we have to follow let me tell you what are the things we have to follow because you understand you have used you have installed a package called multer okay multer is the one of the library which is used by the express js which is actually going to handle the files when you want to upload any file in an application you have to use that multer as a middleware okay what is middleware i tell you just brief about middleware we're going to explain middleware in the next class but in its next uh, after the launch but middleware means it's a mechanism where you want to inject some code in the form of request okay i'll let you tell you what is middleware the middleware means i'll write some suppose this is this is your request you are sending the request okay you are sending the request now this is your server as imagine this is your server okay server means it's going to execute the code what happening when you send the re request from the server to from the uh, ui to your um, this one sorry from um, ui to your api this is called a request right this is called a request this is the ui this is the api now what happening here 
what is the use of middleware middleware means before re before the request is going to proceed before request is going to be executed in the code what happening they are creating another intermediate layer that is called middleware i'll explain what is that what happening this is called middleware middleware means whatever request will come it will go through this middleware the middleware going to be cache the request and they will apply some code or apply some validation or do some logic after that this logic is going to be to the this means before that request is going direct going to the server instead of going that it is going to be an intermediate layer that is called the middleware i'll explain again also middleware middleware means it's a medium between the request and response when someone sends the request that time you have to do that this is my request if you want to do some changes then you have to do the middleware in middleware what will happen suppose someone sending you a request that time you want to add okay uh, that middleware the real time example okay i'm just let's first explain this middleware then i'll be going to explain the things now the middleware means when you are sending the request it's going to the server to process before that that is a layer that layer we are going to be track the request and do the do some kind of manipulation now the question is what is the help of middleware just imagine suppose in your application you want to do the authentication authentication means until and unless user is not going to be authenticated he is not going to do the upload just an example in that case what happen there is two way either you will go to your code here you have to write your authentication logic suppose if user is authenticated just example authenticated then allow otherwise if not authenticated return the return 401 just example 401 is unauthorized now suppose if you do all these things what will happen you have to go and copy this code for each and every functions which function is required to do the authentication in that case you have to go and copy this and check all the function instead of doing that what you will do you have to create a middleware you have to create a middleware what will happen before the request comes to this particular route before the request comes to this particular function to function to execute that time what will happen it's going to that middleware middleware going to check the authentication if the authentication is okay then okay if the authentication is not okay it's going to send back the response means the task whatever you want to going to do repeatedly for the application instead of doing that task you have to set a request pipeline suppose one request you want to validate for each and every method that time without checking the same code again and again for different different different, different type of method do one thing just create one the middleware and use that middleware in your application i will tell you how how you can go and use a middleware in application how to create a one middleware but as of now you have to understand middleware middleware means it's a gateway between request and the response when you send a request from the ui you have to say, receive the request and what will, what will do you have to manipulate the request based on your requirements means suppose some request will come to you you have to check that the request should be authenticated that logic no need to write each and individual code you have to only write one middleware that middleware going to check the author authentication authorization based on that no need to write the same code in your code that everything going to handle by the middleware that is the real time example of middleware but anyhow i'll i'll second half i'm going to show you uh, how to create a middleware how to inject a middleware in your application but as of now to upload a file in your application we are going to use the middleware called the multer first we have to create a multer instance first we have to create a multer then use that multer in your application okay let's go first use the multer to import anything we have to use the var keyword var multer equal to required multer okay means multer is used to is used to work with load files okay now we have to use the multer now we have to use this multer in our middleware means if, if anything will going to come what the multer going to do 
it's going to create a temporary file and that temporary file is going to store the data. I will explain the, what is the working principle of multer. Let's pass R the multer middleware. Now, to add the middleware in your, in your Express application, you have to you have to say the instance of instance of Express. The app is an instance of. Then you have to use the keyword called use. Use means use is used to handle means is used to invoke the middleware into the HTTP request and response. Same way, use you have to use use function. Then you have to use the multer. Then just simple write multer. Then initialize the multer. Then pass. Sun. I'll explain what is this one. M. Don't worry, I'll go to explain all these things. What is what have I written? First, you have to use the app dot use use function is used to import used to register the middleware in in the HTTP application. Okay. To understand this use method is used to register. Register means you're going to be registered whatever part you are passing here. Register this application inside your middleware. Okay. In the HTTP request. In HTTP application, if you want to register any middleware, you have to use the HTTP dot use. Use them. Then what is the multi is doing? Okay. First, you have to understand the concept of how upload is happening. If you are background from PHP or any application, you know that when you upload a file, server created temporary files. Server is going to store the temporary files. Now, the temporary files is going to whatever going to upload from the server, whatever going to upload from the here, it's going to store that file in temporary folder. And that temporary folder is going to copy that file from the temporary folder to our actual folder. Someone send a message. Okay. Let's go and discuss what Malter is doing. We are saying Malter, okay, use the Malter middleware. When someone is going to upload the file, that time, that file first goes to the temp folder. We are going to create a temp folder and that temp folder is going to store the file. Let's go first create a temp folder. Means our all the file is going to store the temp one. First, we're going to store the temp. Then, what happened? We are going to copy the data from temp to actual our files. Let's go discuss how it's going to work. The use of this, use of this one means we are saying that all the files will store in temp folder. Right? Temp folder means you are not going to access. You are, we are not going to actually store the file there. Means when you're going to upload the file. First in the server is going to store in a particular location. Then after we are going to store the data. Okay. What is the any? Any means we are going to store any kind of value, any kind of files. Otherwise, if you are going to start suppose only single image, single means we are going to use the single file only. You have to specify the, specify the file type. But as of now, we are not going to focus on that. But any means we are going to store any kind of value. Means we are saying that this register the monitor. And if any file is going to be called, any file is going to upload, that file first go to the temp folder, then we are going to work on that one. Okay. Let's go and see what actually happening in our application. I'm opening here and refresh, upload this one and upload. You can see that we can able to see the data. See that? If you are not using multer, we are not getting the data. But if you are going to see that, you can see that it's going to store the destination temp and file name is this one. Open your application. If you expand the temp, you can see that a temp file got created. It's a binary file. You cannot get it. What is the file content in this one? Well, this is a binary file which is created by the multer. Means first it will go to the server and it will go to create in the temp folder. Then after our responsibility is we have to create this temp from this temp folder to have to move to our application. Then what happening? When you are submit a files, what are the things you are getting? You have to first understand. When you submit a file, what are the things you are getting? You are getting field name. Field name is file, forget. Original name. Original name means what is the file name you have choose to upload. Means when we are going to choose this file. And my file name is Angular Course Workshop, right? This is the file name I have choose here. Okay, Angular File Workshop. 
an encoding 7 bit mime type you know when you upload a file there is a mime type mime type means it's a file type suppose you are you are uploading an mp3 file the mp3 file will be a lot of mp3 see something called the mime type means multimedia type then destination where the actual file got stored then the file name what is the temporary file name got created and what is the path the path of the temporary file and what is the size the size of the file these are the basic information we will get when you create a file when you upload a file now let's go and upload this file okay upload this first we're going to upload this file whatever file get upload and store inside the file access the file okay let's go you got it the request of files if files means it's going to store in form of array it's an array of data but we are operating only one file we will get only one file instance right due to that let's go first access the file the files are always going to return the array of data I means multiple files but let's go and pass only one file because we are, we are going to upload only one file let's go and create post file instance we are giving any name request dot files files of zero why zero because we are going to access only one files okay now let's go and create one folder where actually going to store suppose let me create one folder called public and inside that let me create one folder called upload public inside that upload now my intention is i am going to upload the file inside the public let me first get the file structure file bar a file path equal to we use the directory name you know directory name is used to get the current application directory then i have to go to public folder then i have to go to upload folder then i have to store the file name for that as I told, the file name is the this one, the original name. Then what we'll do, we'll go file instance dot original name. Why original name? Because that is contain the original name attribute. Okay, copy this one, paste it here. Okay. Now let's go and discuss file. file I got the file instance means we are getting the get the first file instance. then it will be a file path prepare the file this is the last one we are going to complete this one and then after go for lunch prepare prepare the file path okay got it we have first create the instance first the first instance then get the file path now what we'll do we have to go and create the file upload the files okay as i told earlier to work with file we have to use the library called file stream that is called fs the required yes. file stream. okay this is used to file stream now we have to first create the files and do lot of operation for that fs dot create fs dot first we read the file read files why read files we have to first read the temporary files okay because what happening when you upload the files that time it will go first store in the temporary then inside the temporary we will move this file from here to here right that is the basic structure for that reason we have to read the file what file are you going to read we have to going to read the temporary file you are know that this is the path variable contains the temporary file structure right this is the temporary file for that we have to give the temporary file one read file dot path path means this is the variable this is the variable which store the temporary path right then if you you know the if you are going to read the file then you have the error attribute then is a data attribute which is going to read the file and get the data right then after what will do after read the temporary file now we will go and write the file in our application we have to write the file which path we are going to write we're going to write the path in this path for that reason we have to go fs dot write file guys these are the most simple one write file then what is the file path which is the file path okay where second argument is what we're going to write the data whatever data will read from this temporary we're going to write the data then the same one is the error 
once you have read the letter then you have to do one thing then response dot send file uploaded let me do first file upload then we'll go and discuss lot of thing okay okay now you can see that i have a file i have to choose it from here then i have to upload it's saying file uploaded successfully if i open my application and open the folder you can see that this upload contain this angular file structure okay if you open reveal this uh, one uh, reveal in you say upload content the file one if you open you are able to see this content right now let me explain again what i have done here if you know the multer is used to because all, i understand the temp folder you have to create you can give any name but temp folder means when you upload a file first to go and store there then our intention is you have to read from there and store actual folder now first we have uh, used the configure the multer then we have to read the files because files is going to give us a multiple files but we require only file because we have only one file instance then we have prepared the path the prepare path means we have to use the directory name we have, i have created a public folder then upload then file instance original name what is the original name whatever file name you have uploaded that is the original name then i have to read the temporary folder because i have my file is stored inside the temp i have to read from here from here i will copy the file to there that's the reason what i'm doing um, file read the file i'm reading the file the, once read the file then write write means create the file inside the create the files create the new files the file write file means here i'm giving the path name what is the data data whatever read from here it is going to create successfully that's the way you can create and upload a file okay you can see okay now let's go whatever file i have uploaded let's go and access that file as example you can see that here i have a file called angular workshop let me rename to suppose one let's rename to one okay now where is my file the file inside public then one dot pdf let's go and access that file inside here like how we are going i will go public folder then upload folder then one dot pdf right sorry one dot pdf you can see that it's not accessing so it's public slash upload slash one dot pdf means whatever file i have uploaded inside that that files I, if you are going to access that inside this url i should access right suppose suppose this is my image if i right click and open a new tab i can able to see the logo path right this is the path the same way if i upload the file here and if i want to access that file inside the url is not accessing now after launch we'll discuss how to access the uploaded file by url i'm going to discuss about the <clears throat> how we can develop the basic cloud operation using the mongodb set up the mongodb and do the application after that we will create a small chart application and in the chart application after chart application we are going to learn about the uh, the middleware how to create a, our own middleware then after we will discuss the question and answer if you have any question doubt we are going to complete okay okay let me give you a recap of last what i was discussing first up the first up we have discussed about how to uh, create the application and a lot of things we discuss and discuss about the express js and also discuss how to create a application okay and discuss about file upload and post get lot of things we discuss let's go and start with the new things called the actual the api development we'll go and run about how to configure we'll connect the database we'll create some application and that application will use the post postman like we are not going to use any ui but we are going to use on postman and in that postman we have to use how to call the postman how to pass the request lot of things we are going to discuss in this structure okay let's go start with the application what we are going to do we are going to create one application and in that application we are going to cover 
the let me file the project one let me create one file here suppose student dot js we are going to let me rename to mongo now we are going to create a mongodb application in mongodb application we will learn how to configure the mongodb how to install the mongodb and uh, insert or delete do the crawl operation using the mongodb and then we will learn about the our small chart application okay <clears throat> let's go as i discuss what is mongodb you people know that mongodb is a database where is the data database uh, system where we are going to store the data in key value format let me store mongodb is a no sql database where the data will store will store in key value format okay. key value means if you compare to mongodb to your normal javascript suppose you have a object suppose you have an object called suppose the student okay and this student contain name name is suppose uh, node and um, age suppose uh, age is suppose 10 and suppose um, address this is india these are the basic information about the student okay age student address and suppose uh, roll number Role number will be suppose um, one. This is the basic information about a student. As of now, we are going to store all these things: name, age, address, and roll number. Okay. So instead of address, we will call class. So class will be suppose um, at, uh, suppose seventh. Just example, huh? uh, Age ten, class seventh, roll number ten, and section. So section is suppose A. Okay. These are the basic information we need to store a student. Just example, okay. Now, what we are going to do in Node.js, we will learn how to create a database and how to connect a database using Node.js. After that, we have to create a Postman. It means as a developer, you have to use the Postman. Postman, I'll explain what is Postman. Using Postman, how to send the request, how to get the data. We are going to discuss a lot of things. Now, if you see this student object, you can see that these all are the different, different attribute. Means name is the attribute, age is the attribute, class section all are attribute. And another term you can say that name is a key and value is a node, age is a key, value is a 10, this is the key value pair. When you declare any variable inside a JavaScript, you are you are just declaring a key value pair of data. The same way, when when you are going to when you are going to uh, develop any application sorry when you develop any application that time what you'll do you have to in a database you are going to store the same exact this type of data let's first go install the mongodb in your local machine then we'll go to install one editor for mongodb then we'll write a program okay for the MongoDB, first go to MongoDB, MongoDB for Windows, uh, MongoDB download, you can download anything, you just go to download and you have to try download, here you have different, different type of structure you have, which one, which one you want to use, we are going to use, it's on premise, you have to click on on premise, then there is a call community server, community server means it's a free of server, free, you want to use the free one, then you click on download. Once you click on download, you get the download version. Okay, it's a larger one. It will download. It will be download. Okay. After this MongoDB downloaded, we have to install this MongoDB in our machine. Okay. Let me install. Okay, starting for install the MongoDB. You have to go for the basic installation process. Okay, you have to click on complete. Okay, run the network service. Let it be installed. When we are going to install the MongoDB, let's go and we have to download one editor where we actually going to um, means we are going to explore the MongoDB. For that, there is a site called I'm sending this one, guys. The chat box. If anyone interested, please download this one. If you already interested, no issue. You've already installed, there is no issue. 
you have to download this one download mongodb okay next download database explorer means after installing the mongodb you have to learn that how to uh, like uh, how we are going to access the database like if you are if you are from it like a sql or ms sql or postgres you know you have to install the postgres there is a gui software whichever you are, you are using to access the database same way for mongodb there is a there is a 3t robo 3t is there let me open this one okay uh, there is another one Not this one, just a second, guys. Okay, this one. Let me download the configure. Meanwhile, people can try the, all these things to configure the RoboMongo and all these things because this is a new thing I'm because uh, I did not use uh, about this one. Because let me download all these things and configure in front of you. Just a second, this is the license one. Okay, this one. Got it. There is two editor available. One is Studio 3D. That one is used for the like full fledged uh, uh, MongoDB Explorer. Another one is Studio, uh, that is a robot 3D. That is also a free one. That is also we are going to use it. Okay, let's go and uh, work actually our code. Now you can see after I
let me create one okay now we have installed robot mongo uh, like we have installed the mongodb in a local for that once you install the ro robot it is just click it here and you click create once you click on create like uh, you have to see that what is the connection the by default local host 2710 you have to save it click on test test successfully then click on save and connect you can see that the default database is going to open now we'll go and create on database and then work on that okay let me repeat it again how we're going to do that just click it here click on create you can give it any connection name i can give it local host okay then address whatever address because by default once you install is going to work on local host the port of the mongodb is 27017 this is the port, default port and if you are going to use in external one then you can go for authentication you can set the username password but as of now local we don't have our authentication just click on save and you have to click connect then once you connect you can see that our database is open now we'll go and create a database then we'll do the our application right click here and we create database the database is give the database name is student okay database name is student now everyone going to uh, then once you create a student you can see that if you explore there is a collection is there I tell you the if you are from the RDMS background, database background, you have known that there is a database inside database, there is a table concept, right? The same table, the same table, MongoDB. If you compare that, the MongoDB, there is a collection, collection same as table. Okay. The collection same as in RDMS, whenever you use the table concept of a student table or any other table, the same as here called as collection. Okay, collection means it's a collection of data okay what it now let's go and create any collection we'll go to our the letter first we'll go and create our application okay now to run the mongodb application our application first we have to install the mongodb mongodb library in the application for that what we'll do we'll go here and install npm install mongodb mongodb you have to install this library if you want to install this library then only you are able to access the mongodb then what will do first go and npm install mongodb and i can say means this is used to install mongodb in your project here yeah. You have to install the MongoDB. Same way you are installing Express, the same way you have to install the MongoDB. Now let's go and work with our actual application. Then suppose I have to create a web server Express equal to require. Right. Then bar app equal to Express. Here, yeah. initialize the app. Now simple one. Are. we'll go later first we'll go we have to use the mongodb to use the mongodb let's first create bar mongo equal to require mongodb these are the syntax guys these have to follow there is no other option we have to use the mongo dot mongo client this is the syntax we have to use this is the syntax we have to use means we are going to use the mongo client as a library in our application okay. this is the mongo client next next we'll go and start the database connection Database connection means we have to first connect the database, then we will check that this is working or not. Okay. For that, start the connection. Start the connection. What we'll do, we have to first define the connection string. Or define the connection string. Connection string. What is connection string? Connection string means 
to connect the database we require the connection string for that the mongodb connection string what we are going to write we are going to write mongodb colon localhost colon because when you going to connect the database that time you can see that when you create it's asking the address is localhost the port is 27017 the same i'm going to write the colon the localhost colon 27017 is my connection string okay the connection string means the database path where you want to connect then what will do you have to create the mongo client there is a function called connect the connect function work is you have to connect the database first asking the url you have to pass the connection string got it now when you pass the connection string then what we will do there is a function that is a callback that is the error another one is the database i tell you if connecting to this endpoint if there is an error error means we will get if any connection failed to the database okay what i'm saying here if you are going to connect to the database if an error will come the error variable is going to capture this one if you can see the file file also we have read this error and data same way we have error now once the connection is happened here you can see that i did not pass any kind of database name first you have to establish the connection once your connection is established then what you will do you have to set the database for that reason what you will do suppose then database dot pb okay what is this item called by client just a second then database dot db you have to share the database the db you have to set give the database name the database name will be the student this is the database name what it the database name is student so what you did you have first defined the connection string then in the connection string what you do you have to do the connect the connect you have to pass the connection string in their callback function means after connect what they'll they're going to return two things one is error another is client client means the instance then in error means if there is any error is going to throw that error you have to catch that error it means the client is going to get client is going to get the instance of the current database connection then to set a connection then you have to use client dot db okay client dot db means you are setting that okay this client is now going to use the student database okay after doing all that let me do one thing right right console dot log Control log connection connected successfully. Connected successfully. Okay. It's a string. Let me not run it and then node mongo dot this. You are saying it's saying connection successfully. Let do one thing instead of this port let me remove this one and run it again you can see what happening it's not showing anything because the data is coming in the error let me do one thing if error if error then console dot log error Sorry. Okay, it will wait some time because you're going to be connect the 
will wait for happening we'll wait for some time it's going to connect the database if after some seconds if not going to connect it's going to throw an error okay meanwhile the application get be run run we'll, we'll do one thing we'll start the actual programming means it's meaning that if you have any problem with the application connection string or any connection error then this block is going to execute if there is nothing then it's going to be called it's going to execute this part okay this is a basic database connection using the mongodb but our main intention is after in the here we have to go and create a collection inside the collection we have to go and insert the data we have to do a lot of things there okay let's go and actually start the programming what i'm doing this connection you are not going to do for all the actions all the actions means let me do i am doing one thing app dot get app dot get suppose here what i am saying suppose um, app dot post just example app dot post i am doing insert okay i am doing the insert then what i will do then we will request and response these are two things here i will insert the data to the database okay. i am trying to do it here i have created a event called post in post there is a router name is insert when i am going to call a insert as a post format then whatever data i am going to pass in the insert then that data i am going to insert the database first that first go and create a collection called students i have created a uh, collection called students okay this is the collection name is students what i'll do once i click on this post then i want to insert the data okay for that reason what i'll do i have to first call database then after database i will store the data then i have to do the connection all i am going to do a lot of thing then what i will do when you are doing this client.db, you are saying that my client is going to use the student database. What I will do, I will create a variable called dbo database object and store this dbo here. Means what I am saying, this dbo is now store the instance of the database. Means in future, if I want to insert, update, delete, I want to do any kind of operation using this database. Then I no need to connect database again and again and again because database is once connected. No need to connect each and every time. For the reason, what I'll do? All the database means all my operations of this database. I am going to store inside the DBO variable. Means just variable where I am going to store the database object. Now, in post, what I'll do? I want to post the data. Okay, I want to post the data. To post the data, what I will do? I have to first insert. How to first I'll do the insert one. To insert one, what should we going to follow? First, I'm going to create an object. Okay. The object object should be content name. Then should be content age. Suppose 20. Suppose class. Class suppose suppose that is first. Then section. Section A. And roll number suppose a roll number one for example huh? mm -hmm. this data we need to store so we give the name as suppose john john is a name the age is 20 class is one section is a and roll number is one we need to store this data inside our database okay now to do that what we'll do we have to send this object to our database then we will know that is a working or not working okay for the reason what we'll do we have to first go to dbo what is dbo dbo is the instance of database means student database instance store in dbo okay now in the dbo dot collection which collection you want to work first this is the database name right this is the database name inside database we have a collection then you have to first write dbo dot collection 
right dbo dot collection collection means which collection you want to work our collection name is students okay i have to write the collection name is students and what i have to do i have to do insert how many item i'm going to insert i'm going to insert the one item for that the database if you want to insert a item then you have to use the function called insert one insert one is a function which is used to insert the item to the database okay now what you have to insert you have to insert this object then you have to pass this object here okay you have to pass the object here now after you insert what will do you have you have two option either successfully insert or it's an error then we have two block here one is error block one is result block right so always understand the concept why all the things are called callbacks because it's not going to wait until insert happen it will throw the insert once the insert happen this block going to be called that's the reason all are the callback function all are the callback function due to that this what happening collection is used to collection means give the table name or collection name second insert one function the insert function means insert the single data in the collection that's the reason we're saying okay database database object dot collection which collection what you want to do you want to do the insert what you want to do insert you want to do insert the this data okay now once you insert the database is going to return two things one is the error one of the result error means if any error will occur inside the application then it inside the insert then going to fire this error if successful insert then it's going to send us the result follow to then what will do i i'll go write response dot send response then send result what what will do once we are going to insert the data that time that time whatever data we are going to pass whatever you have mentioned here that data we need to insert the database and whatever result will come we are going to display the data okay now let's go let's run this application for that reason i am running the application but the things will be i have to start the server right for that reason this app does listen i write the 3000 port because it's the default port and we'll do that okay let me do that let me compile again mongodb now it's happening now if you go and write 3000 it's not displaying because we don't have a we don't have a, any route matched with the default one but we have the post of insert let's go how we can consume this post of insert in our this postman i let you know that what is a postman postman is a rest client executor means suppose you want to execute any kind of rest api endpoint with data then we have to use the postman and this is the postman you have to go postman site okay i'll, I'll let you know that if you don't know i'll let you know postman download you can see that i'm sending this one you can simply go and click the download one okay this postman is used to this software is required as a postman in the postman you can execute the rest api now the postman is there now as i told it's asking okay, if you see the editor you can see that it's asking the you enter the request url our url is 300 slash insert slash insert right then i will go here write slash insert okay now we have to check what is the method the method is post due to that what I'll do, I'll instead of get, I'll make it post. Okay. Now that I have to click on send. Once I click on send, you can see that what happening is sending us acknowledgement true insert ID equal to this one. Means insert done successfully. If I go database and right click here and view document, you can see that I have one record got inserted. 
like name is john age is 20 class is 1 section 1 roll number 1 got it how you can consume the api using database means here whatever you have passed you have declared the data and that data you have inside the database okay now you have a question okay this data i have fixed means all the data should not be fixed data should be dynamic suppose you create a form you are sending data from here now our question how we can go and access this data access the data from the api means we are going to send the data in the body we are going to send data in the body then that data we are going to receive the data inside our application okay let's go and work with that how we are going to do the things you got it right how to insert the data this is the function insert the data now after you insert the data we will learn about other things like how to pass the data from the ui api a lot of things we are going to discuss but before that you you already know the how to use the how to use this one right this uh, um, postman let's go create one form and that form contains this name age class section roll number once you click on that form will pass the data from that form to here and store the data we'll see okay we'll see how the actual application work for that reason what we'll do i'll go to the file and create a file called student.html okay now what will happen go to mongodb here i have created another route called app.get and that is the path is student insert okay then we have request and response I'll do I'll do response dot send file basic structure right basic structure of coding and then I have to do directory name slash this is the file slash huh. then file slash student dot html right clear this is the get one this is the post one I go and run it you can see that if I type and I as insert you can files I think it's a files oh sorry it's files okay you see that you know different nothing because we did not add anything here then we'll go here and write html and the function will be display equals one new student okay and let's go and design the form that form contain these things what are the things name age class section roll number we'll create all these things then we have to do how it's going to work okay let's go to form then method will be the post right that will be post and action is insert right then we have to design the form design the form we have to go for input suppose name then input input type text text right then name equal to suppose name break then suppose uh, age and age let me create copy paste firstly for your will be age then Okay, 
basic form we are not going to need on any dui designing name age class section role number we have to want to click on create we have to create a database okay now in the latter example means in the previous example we have learned about http in http to access the form data we are using the encoder right we are using the encoder same way here suppose in our application in the post you want to access the data you have declared the encoder okay encoder means the body parser you have to use the body parser which is going to be parse the body okay now you have to use this post encoder in your application same code i'm just copy paste from there to here no time to write all these things now what we'll do instead of this object let us go on console dot log request dot body we'll see that what data is coming from the database then what we'll do response dot send request dot body okay Okay, now it's done. So one, I'll give name as uh, suppose um, Ranjan Gopal. You can see for data coming, coming as a name, age, class, section, role number. Now, what we'll do, whatever data we hard coded last time, okay, whatever data we hard coded last time, we are going to, instead of this object, instead of this object, we are going to pass the request body inside the application. We are going to pass the request body inside the application. We have to remove this object. Let me comment it down. What I'm doing, guys, let it be there. I am going to create, I'm going to comment it for your better understanding. I'm going to comment it. No, no. Comment. I'll comment this part only. Instead of passing this object, what I'll do, I'll pass request dot body. Okay. Now let me read re re again. I go here, enter the data, click on create. Once I click on create, it's displaying this data. You can change anything. You can say it here. New record inserted it's up to you how will it inserted successfully successfully you have insert like right? same way if you go and strike it okay and you have if for suppose go instead of gopal suppose it's ranjan and I click on create you can see that new record successfully your database and run it you can see the records are getting created right the records are getting created now what i shown you i have shown you how to use the postman and how to create a screen where you're going to insert the data how to do the things now let's go whatever data we have inserted let's receive that data okay whatever data we have inserted we have inserted all this data now let's go and access that data in our application we have to know that what are the application uh, uh, what are the touch there and we have to go and search by the age and we have to do a lot of filter okay insert clear how to do the insert let's go and work with list means we will get a list of data the same way to get a list of data we write app app dot get let me write the function name is for list the list is a function list is a uh, list is a uh, router where we are going to re retrieve the list of data okay now to get list of data what will go we have to write the query we have to find the data now let's to do the same thing what will do then we'll go let's check if someone asked the question Yes, yes, uh, we are going to upload this channel and we are going to access the git access after the our session is completed. I'm going to give the code access to the git. People can go and download from there. No issue. Okay. Okay. Now, the least one means you have inserted whatever you have inserted. 
you have to display the data. Now let's create an API. That API is going to connect the database and get the list of data. Okay. Now we'll go and write the program where we'll go to the list of data, how to find the list of data. So final list of data, what we'll do, we have to write DBO. You already know DBO is the instance of database. Then we have to write the collection. Collection means the name of the collection we are going to work. And the collection name is students. Then you have to get find the get data, right? To get data in the in the MongoDB, you have to use the ready-made function called find. In find, the first argument is the actual the filter. Which filter you want to work? The filter I'm going to work later, but just as of now, just this is a blank filter I'm giving. If you are giving blank filter, then what will happen? It's going to give us the all the data. Then what will happen? Then two array. What is two array? Uh, this is the ready-made function given by the uh, MongoDB. Whatever data you will get from the MongoDB, the list of data you want to convert to array. Then it, it, two array means going to convert the array of data. Okay. Then you have the, the same two parameter. I'll explain all these things. Don't worry. Means this is what it. Then find means the find function. Find will get the data from collection. Okay. Then two array means. Convert the data into array format. Because why array format? Because we required more than one data. If you want to access only one data that I'm going to there later, but just imagine if I'm going to access the all the data, you have to use the find function. After you get the find is used to get the data. After getting the data, we are going to convert the data to array of array format. Due to that, we are using two array function. To array function, it will get the data convert to array format. The same way, every time in the uh, in our um, MongoDB, there is a two result will come. One is error, another one is data or result. If there is an error, you have to handle the error. If there is a data, you have to display the data. Whatever data will come, we are going to send response dot send the result. But it, whatever data will going to comes to our side. We'll, we are going to use the data inside our application. Let's go and read on the application. Our endpoint is list. Same way, I'll go here to Postman. Okay, I'll go to Postman instead of insert. Let me do a list. And the method is here get. I'll do change this one to get. Once I click on send, you can see that I can able to see the all the data from database. You can see that I can able to see all the data from database. That is the use of this find function. Now you have a question. I want to get only those uh, students whose students age is equal to 20. Okay, age 20. If you go to our application, you can see all the students age is 20. But let me do one thing. I'll edit the document and let's change the uh, the age to 30 okay and save it now we have only two record one is gopal another one is john these two employee age is 20 and this this third employee third student age is 30 now what we'll do how we'll go and write the filter function in using the find means this one is a blank filter if you don't apply any filter just pass as blank means it's saying that it's saying that Okay, you are not going to do any filtration. If you want to filter, what will do? What will do? You just simply go. This is object, right? This is a database object. This is a normal object. Then you have to write age. Age is age. Why I am passing age? Because I want to filter based on the age. Then I have to write age there. After age, I have to write what is the exact age I want to access. I want to access for 20. Okay, and access the age as 20. Let me stop it. Let me stop it and read on. You can see that in the previous example, I am getting three items. Okay, three items. If I go and click on send, you can see that I am only get two items. Sorry.
sorry guys okay you can see why it's not coming i let you know if you call you can see that only john is coming you can see that when i click to 20 if i in the fpi what i did i pass age as 20 but what happening only john is coming but the gopal age also 20 right why it's not coming if you if you can see the little bit deeper you can see that age age here if you open and edit you can view it you can see that age is a number age is a number it's a 20 but if you view this one if you view this one you can see that this age is a string got it the age is a string due to that what happening my filter due to i have passed age as a 20 it's go and search only age at 20 if i will do make it string way okay, i make it string way then what will happen if i run rerun again instead of john if i send i will get the gopal here because age is string there due to that for as a developer you are always concerned when you insert a data our java node.js is not going to check node.js is not going to check the data type as a developer it's your responsibility before sending the data the database you have to format the data you have to like um, you have to pass the data you have to convert to integer float whatever basic you require you have to do a lot of things let me do one thing in the database I have changed both Gopal and John age to uh, John data type to number. Now, if I go and send, you can see that I am getting both John and Gopal. This is the one. But but you can see that when I am doing array of data, when I am doing the two array, this data is converting as a array format. You can see this is the JSON array format. This is JSON array format. Okay, this is a structure we are following. Now let's go what we'll do you can got it what we're doing i'm getting list of data now let's go and access a specific user now as a developer suppose you want to access the student by their id or by their something okay then then how you will go and access a user by a specific one we'll go and access only one result by any of the attribute okay now let's go and access a specific data same way what i'll do i'll go and create the data called list 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 will be going to display the list and suppose it's, it's going to list instead of a list suppose list slash user i'll tell you what is this colon what is this user now as a api developer all the times you are not going to define the url means sometimes sometimes this url means a list a list slash one two three means this data may be dynamic list but the one two three or user slash username you have to understand this thing what i'm saying user slash username means user is my preliminary i i preliminary address but this username is my dynamic means i am passing this username as a dynamic param now we will learn how to access the username from the dynamic param okay don't be confused between query string and param i'll tell you difference between query string param if anything you are passing in the parameter in the url you are passing anything in the url by slash forward slash then we call as a param if i'm going to pass using the question mark we call as a query param always remember difference between param and query param param means if you are going to pass any data throughout the slash forward slash is called as a param if you are going to pass a data in the url form of query string means question mark then data is called as a query param don't be confused param and query param param is the is a path parameter query string is the data parameter query string means you are passing the question mark the path parameter means whatever you are passing here suppose you are passing a b c d or you are passing john the all are all are the we call as a path this is called the parameter and suppose you are passing the john different way suppose name equal to john then this is called a query string and if i pass slash john then i call as a 
pass parameter means it's a parameter now as a developer as a api developer how you can go and access this path parameter in your application okay we'll do a lot of things later let's go api get user username let me go first access the username for that what i'll do let me console dot log request dot params request dot params is used to access request dot params is used to is used to access the dynamic parameter dynamic parameter the path okay when you access this parameter then you have to use requested param let's go and run this one okay let's go run this one our path is user then user name we have to display the data right now what will do then let me open the console open this one uh, postman then instead of a list let me write user slash suppose i have passed one two three four they click on send if they go to the application you can see that it's saying username is one two three four what happening whatever parameter i have passed here after user whatever parameter i pass up i am passing the user uh, uh, the name is suppose um x y z if i send it you can see that this x y z is a dynamic parameter means this is the param you define you treat that this parameter will treat as a dynamic due to that what happening to define a dynamic param you have to use the colon the colon and the parameter name and what will happen when you define these things you want to access this dynamic param you have to use request because you are getting from request request dot params request dot params is going to give you object of data object of data means it's going to give you this kind of object now in our parameter name is username now suppose you want to access the data the params dot username username because this is the parameter username same way if i go and rerun this application and execute if i go and click on this sorry if i go and click on this send if you open here you can see that name is coming xyz if i go to change this one to one two three four something whatever they send you can see that it's getting the one two three yz this is called all about your accessing the query param now our objective whatever username i am going to pass whatever username i'm going to pass then i'll do a filter and based on that filter i'm going to access the data okay now find is used to access the multiple data but suppose you want to access a only single data then you have to use the function called find one okay find one means it's going to access Find one is going to access the data from only one. Means it will always going to return only one object. Due to that, what will do in a database? Our name is name. First, write the name here. Then you have twenty. You have to use this username. Okay. Let's run it again. Now you go here and type here. Suppose John. we can send we can see that what happening sorry 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 okay let's go here and send you can see that i can able to access the john so i may suppose i am passing gopal i will access the gopal if i going to access the ranjan i will say ranjan i going to pass the ranjan the same way you can do i am just giving an giving an uh, like example but for as a developer in a future suppose you want to you, what you learn here you have to learn how to pass a dynamic parameter with params then how to access a specific result from the database right we have we have learn all these things let's go and focus how to delete a data okay how to delete a data now you have a learn how to access the data how to insert the data you learn lot of thing now let's go and learn how to delete the data okay the same way what i will do 
I'll go to database and instead of word get, I'll put a delete. Okay. Then what is the URL? The URL will be same. User slash username means whatever username we will going to pass, that username is going to delete the data. The same way, what will do? Once you delete the data, then name name will be the instead of a delete find one, you have to use the delete one. You have to use the delete one. Then what will happen to delete one? The delete one is used to delete the database, delete the specific record from the collection. guys let's go and run it again you can see that we have a uh, delete now what we will do we will go to the here the postman instead of a get we will mark as delete and i what do i am going to re remove this runjan they click here and send you can see that it's a delete count one if i go to database and run you can see that my record is got deleted okay that is the process how we can use multiple format okay one is get delete post put also same same as get but the use of put is updated data there is no specific use case for put but i understand get post put both are the different different method where which is used to do the their specific task okay then what we learn in this total enter mongodb in mongodb we have a learn how to connect a mongodb and how to create an insert data in MongoDB, how to list the data, MongoDB data. Okay, let me do I'll, let me do the list here. If I go and type list and change the get, you can see that I sorry. You can see I can able to see only two data. Same way, there is n number of data you can do in your future programming based on your requirement. You have to do a lot of things. Then I think we have covered the MongoDB one where we will complete lot of thing. Okay, let's get started. Like uh, previous hour we discussed about the MongoDB, how to configure, how to use, how to lot of thing you have to do. And you have to learn much more. Like uh, you can go to online, you can read lot of thing in the MongoDB. Let's go and start with chart application. What is chart application? Just example, suppose you want to develop, suppose you know in a WhatsApp when you are writing some message and same time someone is reading that message, that happening in real time. Real time means that is not taking some time to, reduce, to display there. I will draw some simple diagram, you have to understand how the chart application will work. Suppose, suppose, suppose you are a, you are a client, suppose you are, you are a, no, forget about that and you have you are a client you are sending some message you are sending some message and that message is going to deliver another another is going to deliver to another message another user right At the same time what happened i'll tell you traditional application way how it's going to happen actually then you understand what is the use of node.js in top of the chart application Now what will happen when you send a message hi, you are sending hi message here, okay, the typing hi. Now when you send that hi message, then it will go to a server, means API is going to receive it, means there is an intermediate layer that we call as server, which is going to store the data. Now what happen, this user is going to read the data from there, because this is two user, right, in our traditional application, we have to send the request and receive the request. But in case of chart application, you are sending high. This high should be go to this user, right? When this is going to send the data, it's going to send the this user. But what happening in the normal application? Here you have only one user. You are sending some request, it's receiving some request. But in case of chart application, what happening? You are sending the data, and this user should be 
receive the same data right it should be receive the same data and and when this user is going to send the data sorry okay so when this user is going to send the data send the data this data should be received by the user this user means suppose this is user 1 this is user 1 and this is user 2 you have to understand the basic concept of how this work now in this case what happened you are sending hi it's go to the api part this is the api 1 now api is going to send to the user 2 now the question is user 2 did not user 2 is is not uh, request to the server right user 2 is not going to request the server because if you don't send request to the server you are not getting the response in that case what happened in traditional application if you send the hi every time this user is going to send the request to the server is, is any message for me is any, any message for me every time this user 2 is going to send the request to the api to get the data just imagine if you send or don't send that time user 2 is always going to send a request to the server to get the data right in that case what happening if there is a message that's okay if there is no message the problem is here you have to unnecessarily going to call the api resource you are again calling the api you are consuming the bad bandwidth you are doing lot of things okay to solve this kind of problem there is a concept called peer to peer connection what is peer to peer connection in peer to peer connection what will happen there is a that should be api but the api should be a event driven event driven means when you are sending the message that time only you are going to tell message is received until and unless you are not going to send any message to this user let me clarify in traditional approach when you send a message to another user what happening you are first sending the message this user means this user 2 is going to continuously read the data from the api is there any is there any message coming to for me or not this the message is there or not there user 2 is going to read the same data same way for the user 1 also user 1 there is a message or don't not have, don't have message but user 1 going to read the data again and again to solve this kind of problem there is a concept called peer to peer connection that whatever you are saying that in you know, whatsapp and a lot of chatting messages are using when you type here is direct go to the user 2 means it is go via api what the things will be the api is going to behave in such a way if any message is going to hear then what will do it will do a it will do a event driven mechanism once you receive here it's going to throw there means you have to pass me send the message to api sorry you have to send the message to api once the api message is received here automatically this api is going to send the request to the there means but in case of this mechanism what happening you are requesting the server okay either in data or not but here when you receive the data that time only server is going to tell you that data is available but in traditional approach you have to tell the server i have any message or not but in case of this peer to peer connection what happening when you send a request when the request sent to the api that api is going to send you to talk to that okay data is received for you that type of connection we call as a peer to peer connection means this is called event driven connection event driven means you are sending a message that message is going to the server this server is going to broadcast that message to another user. In that case, this user is not going to read the data again and again. When so event is going to fire, that time only is going to be received. Then, if you want to develop this kind of application, how you can do that? Because whatever we have developed this application, all the application is developed in top of a request and response. Let's go and develop one application that call a chat application we will do one thing we will run the same chat application on multiple browser and if you're going to send the data the data is going to display all the places okay to do the same kind of chat application we require the socket io socket socket connection you know if you from computer science background you know the socket connection socket is a peer-to-peer -peer connection through the different different client we have to use the socket connection 
using the second connection we have to set up a server and a client where the client is going to connect it and we do a lot of things okay let's go and work with this application first what we'll do we have to close it let me create a file called chat chat dot this the same way we have to create a lot of thing here what are, what are we going to create first we are going to first install the socket.io okay first we have to install socket.io guys socket.io is not only used for chatting but you can do any real time communication between the application real time communication between two devices that time also you are going to use the socket socket means you just it's enable the peer to peer connection between the application okay it's saying how to go to use the all these things what we're going to do let me see Okay. You can see how many people are using this socket IO. Okay, let's go and use the socket IO our application. First, we have to insert the socket IO in our local, then we'll go and use that one. Okay. To use that one, we have to do the same structure npm install socket dot IO. going to install the socket io in our local package okay now socket io is available let's go work with this application first we have to use the express because we have to create a server right then you have to require an express then you have to use bar uh, app equal to express you have to initialize the express right Let's go and actually create the application. For that, I have to use bar HTTP require HTTP then bar server equal to HTTP dot create server its app. Um, bar server equal to require yes syntax we have to follow we cannot do anything for that socket io then const io equal to new server the basic syntax to start a socket okay now let's go and work with app dot get primary path the request and response then let's create a file called chart dot this chart dot this and of this file send file Okay, basic code. Let me set up and explain all these things. Node chart yes. I to open localhost. You can see that. Let's go and design a chart system where we'll de design how the chart will be looks like. We'll do a lot of things. Okay. First we'll design the UI, then we'll go for the development. Okay. Now let me do one thing. Uh, let me do UL. Welcome to local chart. Okay. Let me add a message. You will give the ID. 
Pause. Reset. Un, from. From. Input type text. These are the SQL syntax, okay? And button type button send. Okay, what is what type of message I am going to write here? Okay, if I click on send, that should be broadcast to other people. Okay. Now this is your basic stuff. Let's go and what need to do it here? First, we have to import, import socket IO in client side. I will ask me why this client side is required because this application is going to run in both server and side. If I, if you see that these two images are the client, API is the server. Client is going to send the data, API is going to receive the data. If anything happened to there, API is going to send the data. Means everything is going to happen this two way. One is server and these are all the clients. Any people are connected to the, connected through this API, these all are the all are the clients. We can use n number of people, they are going to use the clients. Let's go and import the socket application, socket library in the client side. For that reason, we have to go and use script src equal to socket slash socket dot io slash socket dot io dot js this is the predefined library okay this is the predefined library we have to use okay save it and press go to inspect you can see that what happened What happening now we have connected now our uh, uh, like our motor view whatever going to enter here click click on send it's going to display in the chat box okay let's go and do that one quickly for that if now you can see that what happening io on io on means it's going to be on means it's an event when connection is established it's saying that connected means if you can see that if I open my terminal, you can see that it's connected. Why connected? Because I am the person who connected here. Let me open the same in the incognito window and try to open enter. You can see that it also going to say that another one connected. Means if you're going to open the server in multiple browser, then they are going to know that how many connections are going to download connected. Okay. IO connection means if someone is going to open the connection, open the connection, that time only we are going to use the connection. Now, if someone is going to leave the application, that time it's disconnected. Okay. If someone is going to disconnect the application, someone is going to leave the close the browser, it's going to say the disconnected. The same way io dot on then disconnected disconnect sorry disconnect then we're going to say that disconnected console dot log disconnected okay let me read, read it again or two are connected why two are because this two tab is open let me do one thing close this one you can see that after after some time it should be said that it's disconnected i how it's not saying i don't know but but it should be said that it should be disconnected okay and disconnect sorry sorry sorry, sorry. okay now we have only one connection let me open that connection incognito window open you can see that here we have two connection and what i'll do i'll open it and close it okay i'll close it you can see that it's saying then disconnected means once the io is connected then we, we, it's giving us a socket as a instance means whatever socket you connected it's going to give us instance 
then if someone going to disconnected is going to give us the it's got to be disconnected if connected is going to give a connected now what will do our objective whatever i'm going to write it here if i click on send it's going to send the message whoever the people are connected to the application okay now let's go and work with the client side first what is client side first means we'll go work in the chat application now in the click of the button means when you click on the button send that time only we are going to send the message for that reason we have to click a function called suppose let me do one thing on click send on click of the button send we are seeing that message function is a send then function send okay function send we have to get the value of what? We have to get the value of this text box. Let me give the ID. ID suppose um, message. That suppose um, message. We access the message. Then bar data equal to document get element by id if you will know that dot value we console it console dot log data we'll see that how it's working or not you go here refresh enter some value click you can see that we are getting one two one two one two one okay now after getting the data what we are going to do we are going to send the message we are going to send the message we are going to send the message to the user okay now here after send the message what will do we will do socket 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 means the instance of the socket one socket dot emit emit means we want to emit the data we have to broadcast the data emit for require two argument first one is the channel name channel name suppose the channel name name is suppose message then you have to send the data data you have to pass simple one guys what we are doing to first we are get first one is the get the input data then send the data to the server or emit the data what is happening i will tell you when you get in the data you have to send the data now socket dot emit emit is used to send the data emit is accepting two argument emit is accepting two argument one first argument is a channel name means the name you have to identify channel name then the second one is the data now when you click the button then socket is going to emit the data as a name of message now what we're going to do once you are sending the data we are going to receive the data in the server and broadcast the data to the all the channels for that reason what we will do let's go to the let's go to the chart one and write the event called io socket dot on message it's saying that when message is going to fire message means you are sending here message right when message is going to fire then we have to go to access the data data will store in, inside a variable called you can define any variable called this message okay then we see the any message now what happened when the data receive here now you are going to broadcast the data to all the people to broadcast the data what you need to do you have to do io dot emit then message name is message then the message i know that it's it's showing a little bit clumsy but i'll tell you how, what once you show you the all the things then you will understand what actually happening okay now what happening here let me tell you in the example now here you are sending a message message now this message go to api again 
this message is going to broadcast to other people who are connected to the channel now this message should be listened by the user should be listened by the user now if any message goes to there there should be go to here that should be go to here that should be go to n number of connection who is, who is going to use the api for the same way when you socket message now we have to write a another function where we have to use socket on message plus what i'm doing i'm just using the data here and there now second parameter is second parameter is we have to use the data okay now we have a message now what will happen if we go and write console.log message i'll tell you once i show you the same thing then you have to understand what actually happening okay here the, this one let me open the same you are in the incognito mode and open the local host 300 now open the inspect you can I'll go to console okay now here let me clear it let me write it high let me get a high click send you can see that this one and this one let me set hello okay bye here also let me write it down xyz you will see that it's displaying xyz real time you can see that two screen two screen interact the both thing if i writing something here abcd and send it's both displaying here as well as here i'll let you know how you can do that for that what actually doing we are what we are doing let me do the process paint understand when you are sending a message when you are you have a message we are sending a message that time this message is going to the server okay that time message is going to the server now what happening the server is getting the message a name via channel channel that is channel name our channel name is message when a channel is sending the data its channel name and the data version of the data this data is going from here to server now once data receive here this data now broadcast the same channel to other same channel to other means you are sending the channel as a message and same data is now going to the other other area I means this is a one client this is a one client this is a one client when you're sending the same message is going to all the places in each and every client we have written code when data will receive from the message channel from message then what we need to do that's the reason if you can see that send is a function which is used to send the data socket is on message emit means you send the data on means receiving the data when data is going to receive by the message you want to log it same way when you start when you are received the message and the io just means socket is going to emit the data now once you emit the data data is going to the all the child now here we return the code socket dot on means it's going to see that when the data will come as a message then what is going to happen this is the basic structure of a socket.io okay this is the this is the way you can work on the socket.io socket.io is not only work for the channel but you can do lot of thing here suppose you can create your chart room you can give him the name of the person you can set the author you can do lot of thing in the chart look using the socket.io but but this is the basic structure to start with the socket IO using the node.js simple one you have to emit the data in chart you have to receive the data then you have to emit the data then in the client you have to receive the data means the basic structure whatever following here you have to set the data api is going to broadcast the data that is the structure we are following means here we are emitting emitting to here this is also receiving the data emitting to here this is here you are writing the code which is going to receive the data in the same structure we are following the case of socket.io okay this is the all about our our uh, node.js in the top of this one uh, later i'll going to explain the other things the, the things will be the how to use the public one because we have left something after you upload something after you upload the data we are not able to access that one then we will go and learn how to enable 
the public file access public file access means later you know that we have a public folder inside the public folder we have a um, uh, we have a upload folder upload folder called the one dot pdf right but this file we are not able to access then we will learn how we can go and access the public files in our application okay let's run the second part how to access the static files okay what is static files you have to first understand the static file means because node.js is designed in such a way that in you have to access anything from the node.js server you have to first write you have to first write this kind of code means you have to write the http code means you have to write the you have to set the path then you have to access so the problem is the suppose in an application you want to store the files you want to store the images you want to store any other files which is not part of a api then how we can go and access that files without declaring this kind of api get post and put because the use of um, node.js is designed the web api right but suppose you want to access any files or anything, how we're going to access that one. For that reason, what happening in the, for that reason, what happening, the HTTP, the, this express.js given us a static file concept. Means in the application, you have to tell that, okay, this is my static file. And in the static file, you have told that if any file will come from the static folder, then it's not no required any kind of a get and post. Let's go and use the static file in your application. Okay. Static.js. Here, what we'll do, we'll go to create the same server. Okay, just a second. Let me go to HTTP. I'll go and use the same server. We're going to use the same server. I'm going to use the same server then what will do i'm going to listen the server okay. app dot get default path now request and response of the response dot send static file example okay this one suppose now you want to set your all the static files are stored inside the public folder means you have to set the static folder for that reason what will you go when you are going to use a middleware for middleware for the static file for that you have to use app dot use means you are saying that I am to use a middleware for which one? For express dot static and to specify the path. The path is public. Means I go and run this application. Run this application. If you open the 301, now you have to access the file like load class one dot pdf you can see that it's opening by opening because you are saying that to the express all my static file static file are stored inside the public folder means public is my root folder then if you go and write this way upload class one dot pdf it's not actually executing the code it's going to the server inside the public folder it will check that this upload folder is exist or not inside that you have pdf or not if i will remove this one i will show you if i remove this one and execute I refresh this file what will happen you can see that displaying cannot get upload slash pdf one dot pdf why because this is our static file and we did not define any kind of routing for that due to that if you want to serve any kind of static file in your application please use 
this app dot use express tactic and the folder name where you want to use means this is a tactic file tactic file I think you got it. What we cover today's session, we have covered a lot of things in the in case of HTTP, it means in Node.js. We did a lot of things in the application. After completion of all these things, you can basically develop the basic application because there is n number of things available in the chart, uh, means Node.js, but the basic things for Node.js is almost there. Okay. We will do an advanced course for the Node.js where we will going to learn about advanced things advanced things means how to use the ORM package how to actually industry following the Node.js authentication authorization lot of things we are going to do in case of Node.js next advanced one this is the preliminary because if people know or don't know I, I have no idea due to that only I have to discuss about the primary of this Node.js we are going to conduct another this kind of session for the Node.js advanced Node.js advanced we are going to actually work on this Node.js basic control authentication authorization we are going to implement JWT token we are going to implement cookies based login <coughs> we are going to integrate the Google Firebase lot of things include there and we are going to use a different different ORM is available in the um, in the market for the lot of in the Node.js lot of things is available for the Node.js but today's session is basically for the beginner who don't know about the uh, this Node.js lot of thing okay before close this session i just want to tell you because we are we are also running the uh, another classes another classes means we are also running the angular and react this angular and react if you are interested that class also we are going to do you can see the if you, i am sending the url that url what we will do we will go and check what is the class is currently running on uh, like it's next week we are going to start the angular and react one if you are interested in that class also please join okay and that that all are the in-depth classes like uh, we are going to understand each and every concept of the angular and react whatever you are preferable you are going to join that class 